Hey, welcome back to the Metropolitan Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we have a new deck dive. This is in the startup format, and we have a Captain Padma list called Nuclear Submarine. And this is not my deck list. This is a deck list that was written up and posted about two weeks ago by Kokoro, a patron of the channel. And this is quite a great fundamental Netrunner deck. It teaches really good fundamentals, and I'm actually quite a big fan of it. On top of that, well, of course, this deck list will be linked in the description below. If you want to go through, give a like and a comment. I think that'd be greatly appreciated. The right up here is immense. So we're going to do a bit of work going through some of the deck decisions and why I think this is fantastic for startup right now. But there's a really good write up here going through every card decision and also talking about certain matchups, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So we're playing Captain Padma and we have some really strong cards in Padma and Shaper. I think Shaper was probably the easiest faction to build with the recent startup rotation. We got some strong cards, but we already have some strong cards to build on. Of course, this is Captain Padma, 4515 is pretty standard and we want have a bit of R&D pressure here because the first time a turn we run R&D, we get to charge a card. And when it comes to charge cards, we have a couple options in this deck, but a very, very strong one, of course, with no introduction needed is Endurance. This card is massively powerful. If you've been playing Netrunner for the last couple months, you obviously know that. It's probably the most powerful card in the entire format, startup and standard, I guess, depending on meta. But I think I'm really actually happy to say that with the new startup rotation and a lot of the new cards that corporations have got, this card has felt very powerful, obviously, but it's also felt a bit more fair. I'm actually really excited to see it right now in startup. Corps have alternate win conditions. We're just getting down a thing that can break a lot of ice cheaply, does not win you the game by any means. And you'll definitely see Endurance uh, perform really well. Mind you, with Endurance, you run R&D. Of course, Padma can uh, charge her own ship. You make a successful run, you get another charge. So sometimes a single ice you can get through for free at least. Uh, this card has seemed, it seems a bit more reasonable when you have to worry about alternate vectors for the corporation to win. So, of course, we have Endurance, a very powerful card. This is the thing we want to get down early. Ideally, we're rigging it up to save three credits, let alone get an extra charge on it. And that buys us the time in the early to mid game to actually go find and put our breakers down on the table. We got to talk about the breakers because the breakers here are really good, but they're really interesting. We are playing the fixed strength Anarch breaker set. This kind of gives you flashbacks of 2012 original Netrunner if you played it, but we're playing all these breakers that while they can boost their strength, it's really expensive to do so. Now, these breakers are really efficient at dealing with ice of three, um, three strength or below, but saw gets through any, just about any code gate below than three for just one credit. We have the same thing with Cleaver that gets through all the low fractors for pennies and Mimic is a bit unique. What's the oldest card here in the set? It can boost its own strength, but you deal with all the little entries for pennies. And the really cool thing about startup is the ice pool is actually so small that you can make these sort of decisions and understand like on a very easy term how powerful these cards are compared to the size of the ice pool. Now three strengths are actually get you pretty far, specifically in this deck. Inherently, we have Endurance as the backup breaker, so if we ever run into a big code gate and we either can't afford to boost, we don't want to boost, this is how we can get through the big stuff. And then, of course, we don't sweat the small stuff. But one of the new cards that came in Parhelion is K2CP Turbine. This program takes up one MU, it costs four, and it just gives all our icebreakers, we're not playing any AI icebreakers, plus two strength. Which means finding one turbine and then one buzzsaw means we're going to get through every five strength code gate for largely pennies. Same with the sentries, same with the barriers. We're getting through almost all the ice in the format. And you can look through the ice in the format and kind of see how this lines up. These are the barriers. And if you're looking through all the barriers, there's only two ice that actually really can tax out our cleaver. First is Pharos there at the bottom. It's five strength. So we're going to really want our turbine to be able to deal with that. Three subroutines is a fair bit. Now, the Pharos on its own can scale. You can advance this to get a strength higher. And that's OK for us. Like we'll still endurance through it if we need to. And then the only other one we have to worry about is Brawn, which at six strength is pretty taxing. It's worth noting you can install two K2CB turbines to get seven strength breakers. I would recommend probably not doing that. I can imagine there's probably more aggressive ways to close the game out before installing eight credits worth of additional programs, but it's a possibility if, if you do feel yourself getting taxed out. But all the other stuff, we're breaking for pennies. There's literally nothing else that taxes out well. There's not a lot of four strength barriers. You're seeing a bit more Eli, but the idea is with the turbines, we're getting through these for pennies or we're endurancing them. I think code gates is probably the best example here. There are no code gates in startup that are over five strength. Now, there are code gates that have other ways to tax you out. Funhouse gives you the tag. Uh, Mess and Chesso costs you three credits. Toll booth, it's mostly NVN stuff here on code gates, costs you three more credits. But five strength will get you through basically everything uh, as long as you get down your turbine and your bus saw, which is really, really great in the format. Now, sentries get a bit more interesting, and sentries in startup, their value has changed pretty drastically with rotation. Pre-rotation, Begalter was the killer uh, that you kind of wanted to import if you were not playing criminal. Four influence was a lot, but this was the best killer in the format, and it's probably the killer you saw more often than not. 
And with Bogalta rotating, it actually increases the value of a lot of the mid-strength, mid to low-strength sentries that corporations weren't excited to play. Small sentries were broken for free, sometimes even gaining credits for the runner. So that stuff didn't see play, and I think it's a very different game right now. Looking at the sentries, you're going to see there's two big breakpoints. There's so many sentries right now that are two strength or under, and then there is a massive jumping point where then suddenly the sentries are four to all the way up to seven. The little stuff we can deal with really well. And that's one of the benefits of Mimic. You put that down, you can face check into a lot of the sentries, but there's actually a really big downside of Mimic. The Mimic, while you can't boost its strength at all, unlike Buzzsaw and Cleaver, where you can pay an arm and a leg to do it, there are some sentries that are so strong and actually really, really popular in the format that's hard to rely on just a Mimic. Things like Stafgar are super present in the format, and they can be a seven strength sentry that can trash two of your programs. You're worrying about things like Ballista that can trash programs, Archer that can trash programs, and of course Bloop that can also trash programs, let alone do core damage. And it's really hard to sometimes face check with the Mimic, so a lot of times you're looking either for the safety of the Endurance, which is obviously fantastic, but then you're going to need to eventually support your Mimic with something else, and you have to find the Turbines. Now, sentries are really good in the format. Of course, the difference between how cheap they are to break, it's also important to understand that program recursion and attacking programs rig destruction is like a really legitimate win condition in startup. Startup has changed a lot in the rotation. We've lost things like Simulchip. Simulchip was pretty present in most Shaper decks, so it was hard to build decks that were going to see Shaper decks consistently and try to have program destruction as any sort of cogent win condition. Because a lot of times you spend time and effort trashing their programs, they just bring them back. It's not the case anymore. It's actually really hard to recur programs. If you've lost a program, it's probably staying trashed. There's only three cards currently in the format that will allow you to recur stuff, recur programs, let alone some of these recur anything, and they don't see a lot of play. So for that reason, program destruction is really relevant, and that's one thing, reason why Mimic sometimes doesn't work out too well, and we'll get to that in a second. But that's actually one of the benefits for this deck. It's a kind of rare to see this. A lot of times in Shaper decks, you would see very specifically a lot of folks would just play one of each type of program that they had in their deck. One Fractor, one Killer, one uh, Decoder. And they generally play the best ones, the most efficient ones, and then they could find them consistently with cards like Self-Modifying Code. It's important to know in Startup, Self-Modifying Code has also rotated, so we're going to have to lean on other ways to find our programs. Luckily for us, we have three into the depths, which is a card that can very consistently fire in the early to mid game, specifically if we get our endurance down, and then you just go find the second breaker that you need or the first breaker you need in a lot of cases. But I think that's one thing I've grown to really like about this deck. This deck has two of each breaker. Which means that even if you lose your cleaver, it doesn't mean you're out of the game. While of course you have that endurance to back you up, you can still get that second cleaver down. Hopefully you don't discard your extra programs if you're expecting program destruction. But it also means with two of each program, we're more likely to find the programs we need in the early mid game, early to mid game, so that we can get them down on the table. So it hits two problems. Firstly, it allows us a bit of flexibility and a bit of leniency against program destruction, but it also ensures we get our stuff down early enough, which is quite nice. You're not just searching for the one ofs and hoping to find it into the depths. Now, that being said, while program destruction and some of those mean sentries are very popular, this is something that Kokoro suggests in a link, and it's something I ended up doing in my version of the deck eventually, is I ended up cutting up the mimics to play the echelons. Echelons are the sentry breaker for Shaper, so we save two influence on them, and on their own, they come in largely at one strength because they do count themselves, and that's a bit awkward. We talked about the sentries. There's so many sentries at two strength, but at least with Echelon, if we ever run into a seven strength sentry, admittedly, there's some Stavka tricks with half run. It gives us some flexibility that we don't just lose the game on the spot. And then once you get multiple breakers down, it's basically a mimic. So it's okay in the mid to late game. It's just as good, if not better, but it ensures you're not blown out and you can save some influence. So I don't think it's actually that big of a change. I do kind of recommend the Echelons a fair bit. Otherwise, again, the deck list here goes through everything very, very well. On a really high level, we have all their breakers. They're fantastic. They work really well with Turbine. We have the Prisha, which we can pull out in the matchups where we're expecting a lot of assets. A lot of times that's near Earth Hub. It's fantastic for that. Again, only assets. And we have Conduit, which is generally our win condition in a lot of ways. We get this down. We hammer R&D again. We're so good. We're so incentivized to run R&D, especially when we're running really cheaply with our full setup. This can close games really quickly. You're not seeing a lot of a virus in the format currently. Uh, there's not that many viruses, I guess. Fermenter's really good still. Botulus still sees play, but you can tunnel R&D relatively well when that gets up. Otherwise, we're on Nuka, another new card. It is a charge target and it's good card draw. Earthrise Hotel in this slot is always very interesting, but I like how cheap and easy this is to play to make sure your early games, you're not spending four on a card and maybe you have some liquidity issues. Of course, we're respecting the meta. We have two no free lunch and on the same way, while well, this lets you deal with tags so you don't die to end the line retribution and the other tag punishment that now exists more and more in the format. Of course, we have two pinhole threading. This allows us to deal with things like Drago Ivanov to not take tags, let alone the defensive upgrades. And, and upgrades got even better in Parhelion. 
with three telework, just good economy. A big card for this deck too. Our next best way uh, charge target is Wake Implant. This gives us some HQ pressure. It's something the deck does inherently lack, but if as long as you have one counter on this, when you're running R&D, you can charge it. Again, you can only charge a card that already has a power counter. And then this is multiple or an additional angle to attack R&D to see multi-access. It's uh, a bit much. We have this end conduit. And on top of that, we have three deep dive. So we do have a fair bit of multi-access, which is quite nice. Not a lot of it hits HQ though. And I think deep dive is another change I would make to the deck. Again, we're on 46 cards. As much as possible, you want to play the minimum. It just means it's more consistent. We're more likely to open up with the rigging up endurance sure gamble hand, which is really quite good, kind of what you want. So smaller deck size is much better. Now, if you ask me, um, deep dive is a really good card, but I'm not a player who wants to play this in the early game. I generally try and win the game with this card. I want to get to five points. I want to slow the game down. I want to contest the board state, and this is my closer. So I can very easily go down to one deep dive and still find it in their mid game, the mid to late game, when we're trying to close the game if we haven't just conduited R&D. So I think dropping one of these is, or down to one is very reasonable. Otherwise, not too many surprises. We have the good economy of what single prepaid voice pad. If you can get it early, play it early. Otherwise, in the mid game, probably not worth it. You have all the good economy, creative commission, diesel, dirty laundry. Not a lot of these cards need a lot of introduction, just some very strong basics. Now, I think the shell is like a really strong start, and I think there's a lot of offshoots you can take. Again, maybe you're the kind of person who feels confident that they can play around program destruction to a bit, uh, to some extent, and I think you largely can. Uh, maybe you want to drop one cleaver and then just play a propeller instead. That's a possibility. So then you have a choice and you save some influence. You get your cleaver down when you need it. Maybe you can charge your propeller. That's totally fine. And I think there's other weird ways you can build that, other different uh, multi-axis engines you can add. I think maybe we can consider running a uh, test run if we're really worried about program destruction. It's our only option really in faction. It's really expensive, um, so you don't get that much benefit of it, but it is a panic button. Maybe you can play one of these and then one of each breaker, and this is your solution to uh, bad stuff, a half run hit. You also have Spark of Inspiration, which I think you have to change the deck uh, kind of a fair bit to play this in your deck. I think this is the one of Breaker Suite. I think you have to drop the Parisha, maybe not even play the Conduit, but this is the sort of card that gives you that consistency that you can at least find a piece quickly, maybe not the piece you need. And if that's the case, swing into more prepaid voice pads. Maybe you can also from there play the Twinning. I think that's very interesting. Card that I'm loving right now playing in startup is Hush. Again, our deck is so good at dealing with ice. The only stuff that taxes it out is the stuff that has other text on those cards. Things like Funhouse are hard to deal with. Things like Mesa Chesfo, that stuff is kind of hard to deal with. So hushing that ice means, again, we just turn some of their bigger issues into uh, cost of credit to break it. And that's obviously really, really good. Maybe we're putting too many eggs in the basket of breaking stuff easily, but um, it's, it's a really quite good card. Don't play this with Spark, I don't think. And lastly, just to show you the list that I ended up only minor changes throughout the games. Again, you'll see at some point I made the echelon to mimic change after we got stung by some program destruction. I think the only changes I dropped the deep dive, dropped the mimic and in the spot I played info bounty, which maybe not not worth it. Again, we're running really cheaply. So this helps again. It gives us some good aggression. It's an economy card, which is nice and an infinite economy card technically. But this is the list. I think it's such a great start. It gives you that sort of resilience to program destruction. It has a really robust economy. You have good card draw and it teaches you good fundamentals. You want to be running once a turn. And then once you transition to the mid game, hopefully you're pressuring the corporation enough. You're getting through things for pennies. And hopefully at that point, it's smooth sailing. Again, shout out to Kokoro. This is such a great write up. Do check out everything. It goes through individual matchups. Give this a like. Link will be in the description below and enjoy the games. All right, we're in startup. This is Coca Rose Nuclear Submarine deck. I put up a really nice write up, uh, Patreon of the channel. And did we just play a bunch of cool games with this and forgot to hit the record button? Yeah, you know I did. I'm only a bit frustrated. Uh, we're playing against Near Earth Hub. And I think most of the Near Earth Hub decks that I've seen recently in startup are the sort of like um, uh, Reaper Function, uh, Bladder Word, those sort of like hostile architecture decks. And our opening hand is Nuka and Parisha, which is really quite good. These decks are generally easy enough to deep dive, but just I think the opening Parisha is like the best thing you can ask for. I wish we had a bit more economy. Maybe we diesel into like a dirty laundry, but we're just going to try and keep the board down because a lot of times those decks and this could be fast advance. If they have no table, they have no game plan, let alone their economy is almost all tied into assets. Best of luck. Have fun. Now we do put off good central pressure with Padma. That's for sure. So R&D gets us charges, which is quite nice. And uh they're going to be drawing a lot. And that's obviously worth noting. Daily Business Show is a massively powerful uh, card uh, because it allows them to control their draw. But still beyond that, they draw a fair bit more than you think they would. And so HQ pressure can be pretty real. They did ice it up. Okay, so what's our turn here? We can start with the diesel. Uh, we can get down like a sure gamble, maybe, or a, a dirty laundry with the Parisha. Creative Commission last click is actually not bad. It means that we can like trash two of these and probably just a creative last click, not have to discard cards if we don't want to. 
It's a Vera. Um, I'm not really scared of that on this turn. I think if we lose any of these cards from our hand. Oh, there's no highlight of what this card does. I'll add it in post, I hope. But uh, Vera, when says when an agenda is scored, trash a card. Oh, we do have to discard a card here. That's fine. So we're looking here for the Bladderworts. There's the Vera. Oh, it's a Beal. So scored or stolen. Okay, so we don't have to discard our hand. That's fine. <laughs> They'll do it for us. So that's what Vera does. Uh, so they can see our whole grip and trash a card revealed that way. Again, this is pretty expensive for them. We lost the Deep Dive, which is honestly the card we probably would have discarded on this hand. Uh, we're trying to control the board more than we are going to be uh, trying to kill. I, I didn't realize that Vera, admittedly, we didn't see the text that cares about um, stolen as well. But they don't have a lot of money, so we're just going to keep Vera down and Server 3 down. Uh, last click, will creative. So what's our turn here? Uh, we could do Diesel. Hopefully, again, sure gamble Dirty Laundry. Or three rigging up. That's uh, interesting. That, I guess that can happen. So we'll deal with, I think, server three first. I think it's unlikely to be another agenda. If it is, our hand's not that good. Path campaign is exactly what we want to take down. Admittedly, at this point, like, if they spend credits on that, they're losing credits. Like, the turn that's res, it's credit negative, which we don't mind so much. So the question is what we do here. We don't really have a good target for the rigging up. Um, so we're going to discard one of them. I think we just put the nuka down and then creative, and that's probably fine. In theory, we're weak to public trail at any point, but if they do that, they don't have any more money. And they're also playing subliminal, which is, you know, like we're going to run every turn. I don't think they're going to get value from that. Spin Doctor, we're going to try and contest that first before we check server four and trash some other stuff. And again, this Vera is cost them a lot of their money at this point, and I don't think it's going to have an impact on the game based off of our hand. So we can always like Nuka first. I think if we're playing around Vera, we'll Nuka not first. Uh, so we can... Run the Spin Doctor. They might let us trash it, actually. I don't think we care that much. If they shuffle back Pad Campaign and Subliminal, they probably don't. So let's just check other stuff first. Again, most of their economy is on the table. It's a Beal. They get another Vera trigger here. Again, maybe they're on Punitive, but they don't really have the credits to support it. So we're sneaking up on game point. So they trash the Turbine. That's fine. We have a second one of those. We can check Server 4 as well. Assuming this might be Economy card. Uh, bladder where it makes sense. Maryland, we'll trash that. They haven't resed it, but that's totally fine. Uh, I generally don't want to res it. Uh, if we draw Nuka, we draw three, and then last click, we can theory rigging up something. Getting an endurance down here would be really, really quite nice. Um, I don't know if we need to. Yeah, we could. We're going to be on seven cards. Maybe we go down to uh, five by rigging up. I just don't think there's anything we really want to rigging up. Okay, so this seems like a punishment for order. Um, I think we're just going to rigging up a buzzsaw. Again, we have extra ones in this deck. This only costs us a credit. And then from here, we can like charge the spin doctor and eventually we need to charge hq because they've been drawing a lot planner m that's gonna be good money for them they're on seven uh so we might see a hostile architecture somewhere and a hedge fund so they're on a lot of money now so here we could consider dirty laundering server seven just to check what it is we get the credits after the run so we only have four to trash with here that deals with just about everything yeah hostile architecture we don't care about our hand that's so much money for them we're definitely going to trash that we could alternately trash spin doctor first and then go back for the architecture oh no, they might let us trash Spin Doctor, so we'll trash that. All right, so we lost another Dirty Laundry, which is not great. Uh, we could consider taking the Vera down. Again, this makes sense. All these cards do damage to us, so we want to keep cards in hand. Uh, we could run R&D. We're risking other damage cards, like maybe they can do, um, what's it called here? Unsmiling Serevna, so we'll just draw three. We have our boat. I think we want to keep as many cards in hand. Rigging up the boat is fine next turn, so let's just get our Telework down and Creative Commission. Or we'll probably just telework down, hit telework down. We could also just do credit creative commission just to keep our economy up to worry about public trail. I think that's fine. We could have had eight credits here, which would also have been fine to public trail. Not that we're super weak until we put the boat down. We're just going to, again, you see how good Parisha is turn one when the deck is about 20 assets. Uh, and we only have to deal with one a turn. All right, we can rigging up the boat here for sure. Uh, we can charge server eight. Uh, they could knock out one of these cards from our hand. Um, that would be fine. Uh, this might actually be, I, I would guess that this is uh, probably a bladder word or more than anything. So we could draw once. Okay, Mimic. Uh, there's no more drafter in the format, right? So let's go check what this is. We can get through just about every ice here. It's a ping, so we're going to have a tag. That's fine. Uh, we have to break this for boat if we want to go through, and it gets us a charge, so why not? The license acquisition, that's another card out of our hand. <laughs> probably should have dealt with this a while ago, but like at this point, it probably doesn't matter. We lost our Mimic. That's totally fine. We'll clear the tag. We're weak here into public trail credit retribution. That's the only bad thing that's going on. But that'll be, again, all their money, which I think that's totally fine for us. Okay, now they can't do it because they need five credits and two clicks. All right, another ice. Love it. Okay, cool. 
we need to get cards up. We want to make sure we always have cards in hand because as soon as they start sticking like a hostile architecture, which again is really expensive, and then also start sticking something else like um uh bladder we're in a bad spot. So we're gonna drop uh prepaid is probably a bit too little too late. We're one agenda point away from winning. Uh they might be on three license acquisitions. I wouldn't be surprised. And if they get a hostile back up on the table, like that's pretty rough for us. So we can drop once again. Uh, unfortunately, this is half our turn, so we probably should have worried about that sooner than later. And if we run this as the ping, it's kind of ugly. So I think we can let one card slide and hope for the best. So here we're going to try and use our credits. We can deal with the Vera, I reckon, uh, just because if they score out, I don't know, the tr post-truth dividend, we're in an awkward spot. So this is a credit, and we'll just install the telework. We got our boat counter. That's the most important thing. This is where like a deep dive would be good. So it is a bladder word. That tracks. We lost our economy card, which is pretty bad. Um, but this is the next thing we have to take down for sure. Because again, all their economy is tied up into this. We're drawing a running once a turn also to deny them economy. Here's where the spin doctor is probably going to uh, shuffle agendas because they have eight cards in hand. So here I reckon we need to deal with the spin doctor, then deal with server nine. So let's take the telework. we run server nine with four credits. They can't res uh, Funhouse, which is the most attacking ice. They reckon they have them deck. It's a Serevna. So they can draw cards here pretty easily. Uh, they gave us two credits, which is sick. So we're going to break only one subroutine. I don't think we want to take the net damage considering their deck. So we'll break that. We'll be able to clear the tag. They can draw more cards. They have no money as well. So like taking down this bladder where it's supported, it means they can't res anything in server 10. So like we're not too worried about it. Also, tag punishment here would only be, um, what's it called? Uh, the planogram, which. Trash that, get our bow counter. We probably should have into the depths there. Let's be honest. Um, so here we can, did we already take the money? Yeah, we did. So I think we just draw once, remove a tag. Again, there's not much they can do with this card, so I don't think we're too worried about it. They can't really score out anything. And we want to keep track. Again, there's three bladder words. They cost one to res, and they have to be lower than four after it fires. Four or lower, excuse me. So triple credit, okay. So Scion actually could be a thing. At this point, I think we have to go with the Spin Doctor to get cards back into the deck. I think that's where we start. Uh, so we can draw up once, I reckon. Super five. With three credits, they can't res Serebna. They could still res a ping, so it's a bit dodgy to into the depths R&D. But with this, they're shuffling in agendas into R&D, so the density is a bit higher. Checking archives is also not the worst. Here, this is more likely to be a pad campaign or a Maryland, which I think we're totally fine with than a Bladderwort. I reckon they would have iced up the Bladderwort behind a ping. Uh, maybe they wanted the card draw, but at that point, they had a lot of cards. So I think we can just into the depths R&D, get our pad mobility, and then clear the tag last click if we need to, or uh, telework, depending if we have a tag or not. We could just win right here. We also can use the Parisha to trash the top cards of the deck. It's important to know that sometimes that's not worth doing. I think we can just boat through this. They're not taxing out our boat too hard. Um, giving them a credit would be not good. So we'll do Endurance to get charged into the depths. I think we're just going to get the credits. I don't think there's a program we really want here besides Conduit. Um, Uh-oh. We've lost connection. Oh, no. Oh, it's send a message. All right. DC'd, sorry. So we just DC'd. We reconnected. It's a send a message. We got the four credits. That's it. Control the board, control the game. That's usually how the narrative near Earth hub works. Good game. Um, a lot of times, you know, that opening Parisha is so important. It's the sort of card that we would have tried to aggressively into the depths if we could um, just to be able to control the table because two credits a turn is a lot. Now you can play Scrubber for sure. It's a harder card to tutor. It's also more like uh, fragile to tags, uh, but that is definitely the thing here. All right, let's get another one. All right, this is really funny. Uh, Cyberstein here said, doing pretty well. I've been helping Kokoro with the submarine deck. That's the deck we're playing right now. And I don't think they know. I don't know if they've been spectating our games. Uh, best of luck. Have fun. We're playing startup. Cyberstein took the mulligan. Op is something I'm kind of unsure about in startup. It has one really mean combination, which you can still do in standard, which is the half run into Stavka thing. The idea is that when you res the Stavka, you can trash something to go get the half run as long as you can trash, a, what is it, a four coster, and then they can't break the Stavka. Uh, it's really rude, and we have redundancy in our breakers, but there's not a lot of recursion in the format. Opening hand, we have Nuka. Prisha is like probably not the best. Um, I think we're expecting many more upgrades than we are assets. You don't generally see asset spam in startup. Op just doesn't have the card pool to support it really well. But we have Endurance and Sure Gamble. That's the best part of our hand, but I'm not excited. And Nuka, we're not excited for these two cards. Can we do worse than this? Probably. I think we probably open up a, a Sure Gamble Nuka. Hopefully, they ice up R&D, so it slows them down. And then maybe rigging up the boat soon. We can keep this. I reckon we can do worse. That's the thing with Kokoro's deck here is that there's a lot of redundancy for safety reasons, which is nice, um, especially also without self-modifying code. It's sometimes harder to find your breakers when you need your breakers. Uh, but the idea is that we can throw out this turbine on turn one. Like it doesn't really matter until we get our whole breaker suite. The question is, what are we using turbine to break in the format? Um, it's a good question. Uh, there's a lot of bigger mid-range ice 
A lot of the code gates are four strength. Like we're ex expecting Hordums here. I wonder if Anvil's really poisonous. I've heard things. Hedge fund into Spin Doctor. Did Stein maul? They mauled, okay. So they might have an ugly hand that they're fixing with the Spin Doctor. That might mean RD is wide open, which is sick. Never mind. All right. So we probably want to contest the Spin Doctor before. I don't think they'd actually shuffle. Uh, they'd probably tax us credits before they would shuffle back uh, Hedge Fund. All right, what do we have here? We have a prepaid. We've never played prepaid yet, but I feel like this is the one turn that getting it down earlier is probably worth playing. Uh, it's unfortunate that we get this down on a turn that we don't actually use it. Just about any card that has an ability that's only once per turn of value, I always try and get the value the turn it comes down. Uh, it's pretty difficult. Yeah, I'm hoping so. So let's see, like we have a lot of events. Uh, the ones that cost credits that we can play next turn um, to some extent, pinhole threading into the depths, not very likely, but dirty laundry or would be great. Uh, deep dive, creative commission, not so much deep dive, sure gamble, creative commission. Uh, another sure gamble would be sick. Pushing up for a new remote server. Again, we do have the boat. We have access to the endurance. It's going to cost us eight credits, a pretty penny. If we can rigging it up, it'll take another counter and it'll only be five credits, which is a pretty good price for a boat and jamming through most of it with an upgrade. So we're assuming it's Mana Garm. That's usually what you see here. Um, it also could be Zato, and Zato is pretty alive and well in the format. Really good in op as well. I haven't played enough Zato decks. All right, let's try and find a run event. That's perfect. Uh, Dirty Laundry HQ gets us uh, a, to look at something. They've gone through nine cards. We're assuming one agenda here, and we're assuming about one in five. So there's probably an agenda in HQ. They could have filtered it with Spin Doctor, but I don't know, maybe there's an agenda in HQ. All right, value. Asfi Tagore. Not sure how important this is in the format. It's a very powerful card. Um, we could have put down Parisha first, um, and I think we're going to try and do that, but we'll just take our credits there. So we have two more clicks. Getting down the boat, going down to two is pretty rough. Um, I don't know if there's any sub team we're worried about that trashes the endurance, but we could hope that they score out a 3-2 here only. Maybe it's an Azf. I don't know. So we can get this down and hit it once. Um, I think we might be okay. As much as we can get value from this this turn, our economy is good enough that we don't need to hit that this turn. Uh, putting on the Nuka is a bit weird with the Diesel in hand, so maybe we just got on the Parisha. Um, it's a bit awkward. Maybe we should have structured our turn a bit better if we're assuming to hit Trashables in HQ, which I think was a fair bet. And it's just Maryland. So I think we want to contest that, force them to res, hopefully. I don't think there's any face check that's disastrous. Like, admittedly, now if they Stavka, we can lose the Parisha. So sometimes you don't want to install your programs before you face check into Wayland because you're assuming stuff. Uh, maybe this is also good to play around Anvil if we have to do that. But uh, we definitely want to contest the Maryland campaign. And this means like an uniced Svitacore is like a fair bit worse than uh, what it could be against just about anyone else. Ah, uh, the Yakov. Cool, love it. So the Yakov, this upgrade says they get two credits the first time or whenever they trash something from the server in or in front of. So they can search for one cost from their deck, install and res it for free. So that's just going to be a nice wall. Again, Cleaver can do it. Maryland shuffles back. That's a lot of value, right? Like they started their turn on seven, they're on 15, let alone two clicks left. Now Yakov is an upgrade, so Parisha is only for non-upgrades, which is a bit scary. They're drawing up after here. Um, I guess to some extent that's correct, right? Because you don't want to draw the ice wall. But now we know that's not a Zato, so we can consider contesting it. I think ideally we draw into a rigging up here. No, we didn't. Um, okay. Now Mimic is a bit weak to big old Stavka if they do trash a card, which shouldn't be very difficult considering the deck here. Uh, I'm not sure what this could be. If again, if it's a 3-2 agenda, I don't think we mind too much. Here, we need to install some cards. I'm worried about Retribution. I'm worried about Stavka. Getting down the Endurance and just trying to hammer R&D might be correct. Now, this deck, because they shuffle a lot, they can break supposed R&D lock pretty easily. Uh, this is a bit expensive. I think it's fine. Running last click here, we can discard a card. Um, what will we discard? Probably this Turbine. So let's just try and see the top of the deck get an access here. We can charge this. We're not playing an event this turn, which is rough. Oh, actually, hold on. Sorry. I just wanted to do this first. I think we should get our value first. Sorry about that, thank you. So it's Magnet. So we went for the Into the Depths just so we don't discard a card and we get our prepaid value. That feels nice. Um, this we can bounce off of, but we wanna get our Into the Depths. So this is not gonna hit any card in our deck. So it's just gonna be a code gate we get through for one eventually once we get down our, um, our um, uh, what's it called, our buzzsaw. So Breach Server, they're shuffling with a spin just to get two non-agenda cards in here. If this is the only agenda in the game, uh, Obviously, they'd be an R&D. There might be one more in HQ. So we're going to do Endurance first, Into the Depths. I think we kind of need the money here. We could also just go get our Cleaver, which is like totally reasonable, um, considering the board state. And we still have a good amount of money in our deck. I think we just go get the Cleaver. It's going to drop us to one credit. With the pre-show, we can still trash stuff. <sighs> I'm really scared of... Let's see if Program Destruction matters. Is Program Destruction real? It's a Tithe off the top. Okay, cool. It's 
reasonable piece of ice now. Tight got a lot better with Begalta rotating. All right, so not the speed of Gore. So if they score out here, it's just a 3-2, which, you know, not great. If it's above the law, it takes down a Telework, which, again, not great. Getting the Buzzsaw actually might have been fine, too. It might have been a more aggressive thing here. And we can just, like, boat through this, and then we can run here for one, which gets us so much more Padma value. I wonder if getting the Buzzsaw down for four is probably correct. So we have some good draw here. We can start with the Diesel. Again, we want to get our prepaid value. So far, we paid a click and two credits, and we've got two credits back. Now, the game will be longer than that. They drew an unknown. They have a Tithe in their hand and one unknown, and they're not moving on server two, which I think could be a Zato. Uh, makes a lot of sense with the deck, let alone these Ice Walls get so much better. Card in server two, so now it does seem like Upgrade City, so Mana Garm Zato. So we're going to try and lock R&D, because this remote server is a clown card. All right, let's draw. Awesome. Okay, so cool thing. One credit. We can just smash Dirty Laundry uh, to hit R&D. Now we'll have credits to be able to into depth the Buzzsaw. We can also just go get a conduit, but I don't think our boat counters will keep up. So I think we're just going to try and lock R&D as much as possible. Now they could also here have a way to shuffle if they have um, the, what's the, the, the one for Malapur Data Vault. All right, let's just go HQ. Svitagor, do we want to trash that? We literally can't. Uh, we're on five credits here. So I think we maybe hold the into depths the next turn. Getting down the Mimic is like not amazing. It doesn't really help that much. Getting down the Nuka is fine. We can click the Telework. They're going to draw an unknown card, but I'm assuming they're going to score out a 3-2 here and take two meat damage, which means we might lose cards from hand. Uh, the Mimic is only good against the Tithe we've seen, of course, and the Svidogor, not against the Svidogor, against the eventual Stavka. It's fine. But I'm just worried about them like Zatoing a trash program subroutine, but like we can't interact with that. We just hold the other Mimic. So I think we want to rigging up the Buzz if we draw it. So let's try and just get drawing to it next turn. We didn't get our ability. We can always just bounce off of R&D to charge the Endurance, which would be good. Also, top decking into the Waken plant would be sick because HQ is wide open. And that is our more consistent R&D lock where we can see the top two cards of R&D basically every turn and we run. All right. It was the second card. Triple advance. Let's see what it is. It could be uh, the what's it called? The one that hurts us. Azf. <laughs> we hate, hate to get a Nuka. It looks like it is the Azf. They're trashing something. They're trashing the Yakov, so they can go get a one coster. It might be another ice wall just for the Zato remote. And we're going to take two meat damage here, which is probably fine. Again, we would love to keep our into the depths. Yeah, it's the Azef full art. So it's just going to be two agenda points. We hit Mimic into the depths. Ah, oh, I hate it. Into the depths is how we're going to get our uh, breaker next turn. And there is a Malapert there, so they can actually go find a card. It can't be an agenda, though. Oh, they pulled the uh, Malapert with, yeah, with, is there a window to res this? I'm actually not sure how that works. All right, so we just need to blast through. We need to hit Nuka. We need to hit Buzzsaw. We're hitting the top of R&D. We need to hit our Conduit or optionally our Waken Plan. Both of them would be pretty good. We have a Deep Dive, which doesn't lock the deck, um, but uh, probably steals an agenda. One agenda, unfortunately. They have an Anvil. Okay, I've heard Anvil's pretty rude. All right, let's get something good. Well, that's awful. Now, that's our last Mimic, which is scary. Anvil is a Code Gate, right? Yeah, it is a Code Gate. And it forces us to trash our cards. Uh, which is something that's hard to keep up with, obviously. Uh, what can we do here? I don't know what we do. I do think installing extra breakers is like not the worst thing. I think we need to go R&D and see a card here. I would love to have their Into the Depths. So I think we can just get the money, run R&D, see the top card. Again, they would have to have it in hand. The recharging the Endurance or the Nuka? I think charging the Nuka is fine. Uh, we have one more Diesel in our deck and then two more Nukas. I think we're going to need to draw into our solution. And ideally, we're not using the boat that much once we get down our breaker. We're going to get a charge on this anyways on successful run. It's a half run. Okay, that's half of the combo. Uh, you're not loading the art there, which is really unfortunate. Oh, there you go. When you res this ice during a run, choose a card. They can't use it. Uh, it's code gate and barrier, but this means the Stavka combo. If they draw this, it actually makes the combo a fair bit worse because they want that in their deck. One click left, five cards in hand. Redundant Cleaver doesn't seem like the play. Redundant Mimic doesn't seem like the play. The question is, how often do we keep an extra copy of that? This is our first. So we can draw once and discard. Uh, Pinhole's neat. Pinhole is kind of neat. So we can probably throw out a boat. It might be hard for us to install a second boat if we need to. This is our last Mimic, which is super important. And I don't think we're going to need the Turbine anytime soon. The Turbine on its own doesn't even mean Mimic can deal with Stavka. It just gets the Mimic up to five strength. I think there's some good arguments to play Echelon in this slot and save one influence. It's like super comparable. And you generally don't install this as your first breaker. That being said, the three strength breakpoint is actually kind of nice. 
So they're drawing into a half run. They have an anvil in hand. It could probably be the anvil. And it forces us to trash one of our installed cards. We can just trash the voice pad, trash the uh, Parisha. Tithe as well is another card we know that they have in the hand. So half run, Tithe, and um, the other thing. I don't know if they have an agenda. They would have jammed it. But again, they do have last click. Here we just need some sort of multi-axis. Waking plan would be sick. I do think we need to get our Mimic down because there's no good way for our deck to deal with the Tithe outside of that. Besides just taking the damage, which sometimes is fine. And they just drew a card last click. That's obviously ordering. Um, you want to do that the other way. All right. So we have that down. Uh, I don't, they have, it's a one in HQ to have it. I do still think we consider checking HQ. We know there's an ice in hand. There's an unknown in hand. They just top decked and there is a Svitagor, which we can trash, I guess. Uh, this run will get us an endurance counter, which is nice. That's all we can really say about it. That's nice. So it's not very likely to find an agenda because it'd have to be the one in five that they top decked. We can also just go R and D and force them to res. If this is the anvil though, uh, we have to both through that and then we can't both through the magnet unless we charge this on the way in. It forces them to trash one of their cards. I don't think we want to let them anvil. Anvil gives them such, so much power if we run it last click or second last click. So we're just going to go HQ. We're assuming this is a tithe. But there's a lot of cards in the 20 that we still need to. Our two buzzsaws. Um, yeah, that's a tithe that tracks. So we can break this. Giving them a credit is probably not the worst. This gets us a boat counter and a hostile. That's nice. That's probably what they top decked, honestly, on the fifth draw. That might have been. Uh, getting them to Malapert server is a lot of value. The bad pub we use relatively well, and then we'll just click for five off of the creative. That means also we don't have to respect Archer as much. Now they could still res an Archer, but um, boat with four counters deals with it. They're more likely to res an Archer into the hostel. So I think we just nuka next turn. Again, once we get a decoder, we deal with the R&D probably for two credits. Uh, again, Anvil can be a bit more tricky, but as long as you don't run it last click, you're okay. Okay, so two unknowns in hand. We still know they either have a half run or an Anvil somewhere and the cool thing is with two ways to break the half run it doesn't actually tax us out like they can blank one of the cards at that point like they blank the thing that we use later on extracting the malapert to find a zero cost probably spin doctor yeah there you go nice play love it that really breaks r d lock so now they have like three unknown cards i think they may be looking for something here and again we're assuming there's a zato and we're assuming there's probably a mana garment as well and we can deal with half of that with pinhole uh if we hit the zato we actually could charge the remote server if we hit the pinhole uh sorry if we hit the mana garment it's really difficult because they can just trash a program if this is like in a, what's it called, um, a Stopka, and then still get something else down. It's actually like a really potent thing is that they have a spin doctor in the table and you're running the server with an agenda in it. You can always like use your Stopka ability to trash a one coster to go get like a zero coster or trash a two to get a one coster and install it in server two on top of the agenda trashing it. And then you rescue the agenda with spin doctor. It's a really sick play. Okay. Now, probably Nazif here which we're okay with. We just really have to respect. It's really hard to respect uh, program trash. And they might use this to put the half run back in the deck, which is what they have to do. All right, well, Nuka, we got our buzz saw. That's perfect. So now we can check R&D pretty safely, pretty cheaply as well. So we have all our breakers again. If there's a Stavka half run combo, we lose a breaker and that's really bad. Uh, here we can charge the Spin Doctor first and then charge R&D. I don't think they're going to be on snare or anything that punishes us from running last click. Ideally, last click is creative commission though. So let's just hit R&D here. I would love to have any sort of meaningful multi-axis. Like again, uh, we need to get the conduit. And once we're on five points, we can consider deep diving. So let's see if they res here. We don't want to run last click into um, an anvil because then they have a lot of choices. And I don't know, maybe they threw out an agenda, but I'm pretty sure they have to throw out the half run to get it back into the deck for the combo. I think Kogar was saying that uh, he's particularly scared about anvil. So I don't know, maybe Cyberstein is like doing some mean anvil stuff in this uh, startup op. There is the anvil. Okay, so when a runner encounters this, you may trash one of your installed cards, which means they can use op, uh, and then it forces the subroutine, which are subroutines, which they're both fine. See if they use it. I reckon they will. They generally want to trash a rezzed card. I don't think there's anything we're too upset about. Them trashing the magnet makes sense. It's a one credit tax. Uh, admittedly, almost all their ice is a one credit tax right now. You can also just trash an upgrade. Ideally, you want to do a rezzed thing. They could still res it now at this window. In theory, they have to do it on the approach, I think. So they're using the Spin Doctor first to shuffle something back in. I love this. So that they can trash something to go get the thing with the Spin Doctor. So Yakov is now in the bin. They're going to trash the one coster so they can go get a zero coster. So that's another Spin Doctor which draws more cards. So now HQ is wide open. I think last click we just go HQ because they drew a whole bunch. So it just fires, right? I don't think we can break it. So we'll trash the Parisha, I reckon. 
They lose credit, we gain credit, or sorry, the other way around. So this thing we have to just install chaff to every once in a while and feed it chaff. Because it just eats your board state. There's no way around it as long as they eat their own board state. Top of the deck. They could spin Doctor back in here. Seems pretty not great. That's the last spin Doctor for is what it's worth. So the recursion gets super limited here. And if they score out of the agenda in this remote server, it's like they're discarding a lot of cards. So we have a cool option here, whether we run HQ to force an axis after burst draw. Oh, spin doctor's gone. So now if they score out, they're going to discard cards. That being said, they probably can just like triple ice. But now there's a good fork. Extract Malapert. There's an extract. Okay. So now I think we run HQ. Uh, we're going to discard a card. That's probably fine. It's either that creative commission. I think we have enough money. We can consider throwing out the pinhole again. We know this is probably the agenda, so we have to hit the, um, the Zato. They could have two Zatos too. It's not a region, right? No, it is a region. Is Zato a region? I think we go HQ here. Again, there's so many agendas left in the game. Uh, this is 29 cards left. They've gone through 20. We've only seen supposedly three agendas. So we'll probably hit something here. It's a half run. I guess we're happy that they drew that. And there's no more recursion. So what are we throwing out? This is our second deep dive. No, this is our first deep dive. Yeah, let's get rid of that. I don't think we want to deep dive anytime soon. And we have two more in the deck. This deck has, I think, maybe one too many deep dives. Maybe even two too many deep dives. I think you could like play more prepaids and then like play the twinning. There's a couple options here. Obviously, that's influence. But this deck has a lot of multi-axis. Unfortunately, we're just not finding it. Hedge fund to start. I don't think they're going to score out in server two. I think they're just going to ice up a bit better. Which again, this thing eventually becomes pretty, pretty difficult. As much as it does shuffle R&D every time you run through it. Oh, as long as they use the op ability. All right, they're going for the remote server. That's fine. Again, the question is, what do we trash the anvil every turn? I think we're just start feeding no free lunches or whatever we can get down that's cheap. Telework with three credits on it's fine. This is a really cool card. Now, this gets worse if their ice isn't res. And at some point, that's going to be true. So now if there's a Stavka here, they can blank our endurance. And if it's Stavka into half run, and then we just lose our breakers and we lose the game. So there's no way for us to deal with that. We, like, we just don't have a way to deal with Stavka. And that's, I think, a good reason why Echelon might be better than the Mimic. All right, let's drop. I think we just charged this go HQ. We lost our deep dive. Feels bad. Um, but hey, we just said we didn't want it. It's a Maryland. If we trash that, it doesn't come back. Uh, I don't think they have a good place for that, so that's fine. And we just go back again. Uh, again, we're not creative commissioning. We're losing our prepaid credits, but I think this is more important. We can maybe get one run. Say Maryland, maybe. Here they might score up. Yeah, and feels kind of tricky as long as you can feed it. Could we consider running server two? Yeah, I think we could have. I think we just needed a pinhole. Oh, they're not scoring out. I think they might want ice on HQ here. We know they have a half run in hand. But again, if the half run's in hand, that means their combo is not possible. I don't know how much influence half run is. Let me find out real quick. Probably two? Yeah, it's two. So they could have multiple, but the idea with that is they need to trash, um, they need to trash a three coster. So they end up trashing the magnet by resing a Stavka and then it sinks two of our programs. And we just can't deal with it. There's no program protection in this format at all, I don't think. Uh, besides playing like Katurga, Retrieval Run, 16 credits is a lot. I do think there's an agenda in server two. Yeah, they're just icing up. That, that makes sense. So can we just run server two again? If there's a Stavka, we lose. There's no way around it. We just did not get our pressure down soon enough. Uh, we would need two. We'd actually need two copies of our turbine down. We lost one. But that only brings us to five strength. So I think that's game. We're basically at game point, right? Well, not a game point, but like we're basically locked out of the game. Because if we run a Stavka, it's over. Again, Stavka into half run, it's over. Now, if anything, we can like maybe disassemble this remote server. The question is whether we have to really hit the mana garm or not the Zato. Could they be on multiple Zatos? Yeah, I think so. Is it a grid though? It is a grid. So there can't be two in the server. So I think we have to go for server two because I think that's an agenda. Let's just try it. Right, like we know we're gonna lose soon enough. So you think the Zato's the first or the second? This also gets us endurance. That's the Manigarm. Okay, so we hit the wrong one. Now, if we lose two programs, which programs losing costs us the game? Losing the mimic means that we just can't deal. Well, maybe we're fine actually. Maybe we are fine. I think we'll just go for it. Like here, we, they could stop us. It's actually kind of frustrating here if there is an anvil. I guess we just feed the, feed the prepaid. So now they have to Zato us. And if they use their ability, R&D is safer, right? Yeah, okay. Let's see if they have the combo. They definitely do. So they can trash two of our programs. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so there's a half run. So now they can choose something that we can't use. So they're going to just choose the endurance. And so we fire two of the things. So we just have to get this out of the way. And then we have to play the rest of the game without a mimic. And whatever breaker they trash, at least we have another one in hand. So, well, assuming they're going to probably trash the cleaver considering there's an ice wall here. 
But then they just also like Zato us. So I don't know how you deal with this. I think that we just weren't aggressive enough that we can let this happen. Like, I don't think we're allowed to get to this sort of board state. Uh, oh, forcing them to res works against this, but not much else. So now the Stopka has to fire because the half run for this run uh, blanks a card. We can't use it to break ability. So we can't use the endurance here. So here the Stavka is going to fire and so they can trash two programs. So if they trash our Mimic, we just don't have any more Mimics so we have no recursion. Uh, and then they probably want to trash our Cleaver considering we can go through the Ice Wall. Uh, they didn't. They actually left us our Mimic. That kind of That's actually the one that is replaceable. That's wild. Okay. There are nine credits again. The Anvil gets meaner and meaner as time goes on. Uh, we can draw up. It's not so much we need credits here as we need... um. Yeah, I guess we do need credits, but we need to draw into our last buzzsaw. So it's not exactly over here. Uh, I think they're on another half run, though. We saw one in HQ. Maybe they discarded it, but they can probably do this combo once more. Now, the thing is, if they score like an Azf here and trash our cleaver, that then we're, ugh, I wouldn't say cooked entirely. We can do a lot with endurance. Maybe we're not totally out of it. It's just this combo feels like ridiculous to deal with. I don't think anything, I don't think any card can deal with this besides having, yeah, you have to femme fatale this or something, but then like, you have to do it when the ice is unrezzed. I don't know how else you deal with this. Card and server two again. We know there's a uh, Zato in there. So if we run again, we just get something trashed. And this is the big reason why I wouldn't play Mimic. If we had, a, oh, we just play Echelon. If we play Echelon, we're fine, actually. I think we just changed the deck. Okay, what do we do? It's probably an agenda. I think we have to get our Mimic down, but then we're weak to the second stuff. Uh, we have to trash something to run R&D. We have eight boat counters though, so we can see four on top of the deck. We might actually could like just win off of that. That'd be kind of cool, huh? Let's go. We're gonna need at least four of these. We might as well see four cards. Um, that could do it. Oh, we probably should advance the wake. Actually, sorry. Yeah, we should advance the wake. I think we need to see more cards. HQ is open actually. It's not. No, it's all good. Okay, so this one's gonna probably fire again. We could both through this. No, it's no no big deal. So let's see if they trash a card here. They could. Again, the half runs have limited value. They're resing the Yakov to trash the Yakov. So it's a free trash and they get a one coster. Again, that thins the deck because they're pulling out non-agendas, which is kind of good for what we're trying to do. We also know that the card they did install isn't agenda. So we know all the agendas are in R&D and HQ, which is like the best thing we got going for us. Unfortunately, here we're going to trash two cards. Like we just can't keep up with Anvil. This is prison. Search for one cost. Let's see if they get an ice wall out. That seems like the thing they'd want, I reckon, when they trash their cleaver. Yep, that tracks. So we have to just let it fire. All right. That means we're going to lose something good here. Well, uh, they might not anvil the second time because they don't get ob value, but they could. It's an envelopment. <laughs> this is good for us too, because we're letting it fire on the turn where they've already used their op ability. So we'll go through. This, um, they could in theory use their ability. If they do, we have to trash our Mimic, which, like, that's the problem. But if we don't have Breakers, you don't have to deal with Sentries, so whatever. And we're just going to see all of them with Wake. Let's see if they fire this. Again, they can trash a card. It forces us to trash our Mimic. It's probably a fair trade. Uh, we're not going to trash our Boat or Awaken Blend. That's how we win. Uh, and funny, though, like, as the game goes on, we just have to install more cards to be fed to this. Like, there's no way around it. Um, eventually, they will rip their board up, which, you know, that's not great for them. Uh, but, like, who knows? They trash the card in server two. Okay, that's really cool. So we can't break this. So we'll trash the mimic. We don't need it. We'll see four cards. Atlas, Stavka, oh. Second Stavka, oh. Enigma. Enigma's actually the worst draw there. Stavka doesn't do anything. All right. Um, okay, that's fine. We can work with this. Again, we know there's no agenda in the deck, and I don't think they have it in HQ. So we can draw once. We're going to have to find a way through the Enigma, but I think we just smash HQ a bunch. They have no more recursion, so I do think we have a way out here. It's just going to be a bit of a grind of a game. Oh, well, that's good to know. So we just can't let them score uh, out. Extract. We're just going to hit this over and over again. We're going to have to install cards, that's for sure, just because we have to trash stuff. That's fine. Now, admittedly, all these cards that we're seeing are cards that they can feed to their anvil, so they're worth trashing on their own. But it's also worth knowing that if we go back next turn and see four cards, like, and they use the anvil ability to op, they shuffle their deck. So while that's optional, they probably don't want to do that because we'll see four more. I don't think they have an agenda in hand. So two for five, there's still, uh, you know, 15 points and 20 cards. So we just need to get one good wake implant. And these cards don't end the run. They don't end the run. So they need to get like an enigma up and we can still just make one good run and see four cards and potentially win. It's going to be clutch uh, if it works, but they have a stop gun in hand, which is kind of useless. So we know they don't have an agenda. 
and that's sick. Again, what's in archives? I don't know. Maybe a half run. There's two face downs, and we know there's no more spin doctors. Yeah, definitely don't play Mimic. We can just play, Esch if we had an Echelon, we could have dealt with the Stavka. And like, at that point, we're just scared of Zato, which like, yeah, that would be a problem too, but it's less bad. So now they drew a second Stavka. So it's Enigma on top of the deck. Again, Stavka is totally blank. Mind you, it does let them get a three coster, or not three coster, anything in theory. But now there's an Enigma on top of the deck. So that's probably a Stavka. I don't think we mistracked. Could also be a half run, which is fine. We just bounce off of it. Extract, that shuffles the deck. So now we want to hit R&D. Uh, to see four cards. They hit the ice wall. Yaakov gets credits. There's a zero, no zero cost in their deck, is there? No, there's not. Okay, so what could we forfeit to the two anvils? So we can forfeit what's cheap in our deck. <laughs> what is cheap in our deck? So we can definitely get the telework down. And at that point, like, we could do telework. No, okay, so what we could do is we could run HQ, run archives, run R&D, trash our whole board, and then deep dive. And I think that should win. I think we have a flashy out here. If this misses, we lose the game. But I, there's so many agendas on R&D, I think this is super unlikely. Uh, in theory, we should have hit HQ first. It's, uh, yeah, it's, they're hungry. All right, that's a Stavka. That makes sense. So uh, we need to install a card. Actually, we messed this up. Because we need to break this with the boat, break this with the boat, and then we lose this to Wake Implant. So we need to install another card. So it's not this turn, it's the next card. We know that they're drawing an Enigma, so I think we're kind of safe here. So I think we'll just set up next turn to go off. We can draw once more. We just need to install two things. We'll get this down. Actually, we only need to install one thing because we can just send the boat to that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, we didn't have to hit this. I don't think we really need credits, but they have Enigma in hand. So we just run HQ, run HQ, run HQ, run archives, run R&D, dump four, um, deep dive. And that should hopefully do it. <laughs> we're going to sink the ship. It's just we need two cards to sink. And we're pretty sure that's a stop guy, which at least we don't have to deal with it. But if we, it's boat if we have to. So they have Enigma. Now they drew an unknown. So this is the first time there could be an agenda. Uh, looks like a Maryland or a Svitagor. Again, stuff just to feed the anvil is totally fine for them. Probably not an agenda. Considering they have a pretty functional remote server. All right, undoing it. Makes sense. Maybe they missed. I think there's a chance one of the face down cards in archives is Svitogori. Okay, card in the remote server. Could be a Maryland or a Svitogori. Ice on HQ. So what's the worst case? Enigmas makes a lot of sense. So I think we're going to start by running HQ. If it's an anvil, it's annoying. Let's see if they res here. If it's an envelopment, that's fine again. Ah, oh, it's just a palisade. Cool. So we know they have an enigma in hand. I think if they have an agenda, they would, they would have jammed it. Envelopment. Okay, good to know. So here, I think we just run R&D, right? We both through this, both through this, if they let us. If not, we do sell, sell. Yeah, we just go R&D here. Uh, is there any tricks where they put a defensive upgrade on R&D? That's the only bad thing that they can do. So here, we'll charge the wake, I reckon. Uh, actually, no, there's a chance. Two, four. If this is an envelopment, we need two, four counters for that. It leaves us two counters. No, that's fine. I guess we charge the wake. Let's see if they res it. I think it's a Stavka. I don't think they res this one. I think it's a Stavka. A Serevna here would be super rude. That actually would be, uh, no, we just float tag. It's fine. We just don't take the damage for sure. We have a chance here. It's risky. Well, we're going to take our outs again. It doesn't look like they have agendas in HQ. So 17 cards holding 15 agenda points seems very likely to win on the wake alone, let alone the deep dive after it, if we can. All right, it's a half run. That's actually going to buy them a turn. That's sick. Okay, so uh, they can choose to fire a, a remove a card here. If not, we both through it. So it looks like they're not using the ability. If they did, they would have actually bought themselves a minute. So we're going to boat through that. They could have discarded a card to make this unbreakable. So let's see what they do here. This first anvil will fire. Second anvil is going to fire. Whether or not they, they trash a card, probably going to fire. So let's see if they trash something here again. If they use their op ability as well, they're taking a non-agenda out of their deck, which means the density gets even higher. And that's the one big downside of this. We haven't kept good track. I think I'm going to put stats on here after the video of how many cards they trash for their op ability, which just increases the density of R&D by that much. So they trashed a card. They can go get a three coster. It's an enigma on their mode server. Okay, another agenda out of a non-agenda out of R&D. So this is just going to fire. That also means that he didn't use this to get like a mana garm on R&D, which I think we still could have dealt with. I think we have the credits, but that's like the sort of thing that we're scared of. Um, so we'll sync this. That's fine. This anvil, we can both through it. We'd ideally want to. Um, it buys us a bit more legs, but I do think the density in R&D is just kind of nonsense. So we probably went off the wake. And if not, we have to deep dive for it, which again, 
pretty good odds. Admittedly, there's a bit of like overlap between the cards we see the wake and the cards that we see with the deep dive, but it's still four extra cards. We'll take that if we can, if we need it. Second anvil. They did trash the card, so we're going to have to let it fire. It's going to sink a boat. It's okay. They're replaceable, right? Breach server. Let's see all of them. Hostile. Above the law. Oaktown. Oaktown. It's all agendas in there. That's not surprising. <laughs> oh, good game. That makes sense. I don't think either of us saw an agenda in a, a long time. Oh, man. That's really funny. That's really funny. Yeah, I, I don't think you play Mimic. I think you're too weak to this combo, um, which is like what I think most of the ops I've seen in Startup are doing. So I think that's a really easy change. You get two more influence back if you want to drop both Mimics for Echelons or at least one. Must have come to the bottom. Yeah, that happens more and more the more cards you remove from your deck with op. But we played through our outs. Again, the density in R&D seemed pretty high. Yeah, our current iteration two Echelon, that tracks. All right, that, that works. We'll do another one. Uh, the deck's actually quite fun. All right. We're playing against the Uh This is the nuclear submarine. We did take out the two, um, what's it called? The two mimics to play two echelons instead. We're running into some issues with some of the higher, scarier sentries that are pretty prevalent in the format. We also ended up dropping um, one of the deep dives. I think three is a lot. And then we're just playing an info bounty because it's two influence and I like it. It's fun. So we're getting playing against Pravdivost. I recorded a really, and by recorded, I mean, I forgot to record a really good Pravdivost game we played earlier this afternoon. I'm still kicking myself. Uh, this opening hand's not very good. We don't want the turbine early. The wake is okay. Pinhole's not that necessary. They could be on Drago, but you often suspect Drago, I guess, more out of the time of Reality Plus, but Proptivos is really fun. Now, what Proptivos does in Startup has changed radically. It lost a lot of cards in rotation. Bologna, Cordon, uh, Aket. So I think they're either playing full traps with like Check a Scion kind of blowing you out and playing some of the tag punishment. Um, we have no free lunch for that. We're going to mulligan though. Oh, that's a fair bit better, isn't it? All right, so we're popping up. We have that pressure on R&D again. If we're running, though, we don't have to make a successful run, but if we're running, they're generally getting their ability, and I love subliminal messaging and prop. It just gives them the, the ability to uh, force us to run. Install draw. Well, you could probably do that in the other order. And a card in server one, no idea what this could be. It could be three net damage, in theory. It could be an agenda. It could be two tags. It's kind of hard to play that sort of game here. And I think there's a huge amount of variance, especially on JNet Casual, of how bad this could be. So do we check it? What are we assuming it is? If it's, uh, what's it called? It's a Vladisabirsk. We can't really afford to trash it, especially if we dirty laundry it. So I think we can just be a bit slower. I think the subliminal messaging credit is less good for them than the advancement. So I think we can just set up. Rigging up for the boat is good. Ideally, no free lunch will make that a bit safer. I don't think we have to show it right now. And then next turn, we can just um, rigging this up and then like dirty laundry R&D or HQ. Get a bit of information about their deck. And they're not advancing this, so... As soon as they advance it, it obviously changes what this could be and what we're scared of. Invincible Trap. So Clearinghouse, that's a thing. They also could just be on Ubiquitous Vig. I don't think a lot of people are playing it, but it makes sense. And I think we're going to check this. So speaking of check this, I mean, find a check a Scion. We're rigging this up here. We'll charge it for sure. We could consider Dirty Laundering Server 2. I don't think I really want to. Um, we died at Urtica Cypher, so we're going to play it a bit safe here. We have to expect a Funhouse or Mesna Chespa here, a ping as well to give a tag. So we're going to both through that. We have to clear the tag. We get the boat counter back, which is nice. Let's see what they advance here. So it's a crypto crash. We'd love to steal that. Don't know what this is. Again, could be a Lidisabirsk. We're going to probably clear the tag uh, because retribution, even just like predict the planogram is worth clearing the tag. And then if we get this, we're still short. They could in theory like advance Drago and then sink our ship, but not much we can do about that. We're going to get a bit more credits, I guess. Doesn't really change public trail. Maybe we should have drawn there. Probably should have drawn there because in theory, we could have just died to like uh, Drago into end of the line. I think keeping four cards in hand is more important against uh if we're underneath eight credits with no no free lunch i think that's actually a pretty considerable learning just drop okay so we're probably not going to run that and they're going to score out a crypto crash eventually they pushed there okay we're gonna start with the nuka if we get just r d pressure we can kind of just like hold um and then maybe lock them a bit uh they didn't advance their ice which means less likely to be a mess than chestfo again this could be a vlad or something really scary so what do we do here do we want to run this turn i think we could consider it we probably want to do it with into the depths which we need we need a fair bit more money uh, to do that i don't really like dirty laundering just because they get an advancement and that's actually a fair bit scarier they could have scored out if that wasn't a 4-2 agenda so i don't think it exactly is it's probably more likely of a disabursk or a trap so we got two clicks left here we can hit the telework and then probably just click for a credit we could also draw and throw out the boat i think that's fine we have enough boats um prepaid like in this deck is a bit tricky we don't we have a good target especially in hand yeah okay let's get rid of a boat hopefully we don't lose that one all right so subliminal's back and i think we're totally fine with that 
Again, I do think that's less of a punishment than giving them a free advancement on a lot of board states. Um, they're drawing up. Again, in theory, also, you should do subliminal technically last in the turn. Uh, if you draw up, you might see something else. Again, not that it costs to click, but there are some turns where keeping subliminal in the hand to pad the hand is correct. Now, that sometimes gives your opponent a big read, so your mileage may vary. I've sometimes held subliminal their opponents like, oh, they're flooded, let's go. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you need to smash that out. Pseudo click one. It's just you don't gain much from not doing it, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Maybe we're just being too critical. So here, if we into the depths, we can do prepaid into the depths. Um, that means we pay two for that, and then we can get our conduit down, and we can just go hand. We also can charge the Nuka, which I think is more important. We're going to need the card draw. And if we get a conduit down, that could be an entirely different game. If they're playing traps, again, a lot of them are assets that trash for zero to two credits on R&D. Uh, and that can give us a better way to deal with the game than trying to figure out and suss out what's on the table and what we should run, what we shouldn't. Once we steal one more agenda too, like if they're playing five threes, it'd only be send a message in the format. We could try and close the game out with deep dive, which is like totally possible. Again, we cut this down to two in the list and I think that's fine. Even two might be a lot. Like there's technically a lot of multi axes in the deck. We're just not drawing it consistently. And I think a big turning point of this deck is figuring out how and when to enter the depths, whether I should just go for breakers or in a lot of case, I'm just like getting conduit down for four credits, which, uh, you know, it's better than a lot of ways to do it. It also gets a charge or a virus counter, which is nice. We might have DC'd. It's hard to tell. All right. So they installed ice. They drew installed ice on archives, which makes sense. Again, with the boat, you want to make no easy run. Um, we just lost connection. That happens. Sometimes it makes us lose the, um, the tooltip text, which is the worst part of the DC usually. I think we're just going to go for it. This is like the turn that I guess playing prepaid makes sense. Again, the sooner you get it down, the cheaper. Uh, this is going to put us down to two credits, which is a bit of a bummer. If we, uh, oh no, three credits. If we get down our conduit, uh, we'll hit Nuka. I think that's probably more important. The endurance is good. We're going to get a charge anyways. We need the Nuka. It's a mess in Chesso. So once this is advanced, eventually we get through this really cheap. Um, here we both threw it, but the advancing this is so powerful. It's a really, really taxing ice and nobody deals with this while barring playing hush, which honestly we could consider like imagine into the depths and hush this. That'd be sick. All right. Ah, so we charge endurance. So here we can gain four credits, which is nice. Install program from our stack so we could get the buzzsaw, but that's only good also once we get our turbine down. Otherwise this costs four to break instead of one. Or we can charge a card. I think we're just going to get the conduit and kind of put the game about R&D. Admittedly, that's the best ice they have there. We're on three credits, so we're kind of weak to public trail. We have an orbital. Gotta respect that. That could be that. That's important to know that they could give us a tag with seamless. Even a tag and a click left is terrifying. So we're going to try and play the rest of the game on four cards in hand. So we're sort of on game point, maybe. We'll drop a hey, info bounty. Love it. Uh, at this point, we are going to get public trail no matter what we do. So installing a telework is risky into tag punishment, but I think we do it. And I think the info bounty here might be a bit rough considering they biced up everything. They advanced the mess in the chest, so not the card and server one, so more likely to be something else. Subliminal messaging, they drew that. Ice on R&D, again, pretty taxing. Now, for what it's worth, this ice just ends the run. Uh, like, we can bounce off of it to charge our stuff. And non-equivalent, are they going to give us credits? No, they're not. They're just getting three. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Okay. So what can we do here? I think checking HQ makes sense. Again, they've gone through 10 cards. We've seen two agendas. That's actually kind of what you expect. Actually, they've gone through 15 cards. So you assume there might be one agenda in HQ. I think that charges our boat, which is great. It gives them advancement, which is like kind of mediocre. But this is a pretty good run with a prepaid. Admittedly, though, if we uh, have to use our endurance here, we're pretty low on endurance charges, which is a good reason why they iced up archives. But if this is like a fun house, that's really expensive for them, admittedly, as well for us. So Revna, let's see if they pay us. Again, we're only breaking two subroutines on this anyways, so let's break two subroutines. So Sarebna is a sentry, so we definitely don't want the net damage is pretty rough with this hand. Uh, them drawing two cards is fine, so let's just not take the tag. So they paid four credits, hit our boat, and they can draw two cards, which is sometimes very scary uh, when we're accessing on HQ. Like maybe they made the gender density less on their hand, but they've also just drawn into a, a random axis, which is scary. Advance a card. Again, this could be a Vladisabirsk. If the Beal will take it, I wonder if they drew that in. But now we're on game point where we consider just trying to win off of the deep dive. So if we hit the Nuka, uh, then we'll have no more Nuka. We'll also have seven cards in hand, which is hard to play out. So I think we'll just draw once. Parisha, I don't think that's worth playing. But at this point, we're trying to just consider deep diving out. Now that's going to be difficult. Again, this, the net damage matters if we want to hit the deep dive in hand. Uh, this is, again, expensive to get through. But we need to get boat counters. Once we get our cleaver down, we can pay one for a bow counter. And they know that they could probably rush us out here. Two installs. If we don't run, they need seamless launch. 
to be able to do something really cool. So I don't know if we run this turn. I'm like really scared to some extent. It's really good that we have a no free lunch here, but in theory they could like drag onto a tag. Having the no free lunch kind of like opens up, up pretty heavily. Now Echelon, uh, unfortunately, uh, is not at, at strength of Serebna just yet. So we'll get the down. We're definitely going to hit this. We have one click left after that, and we're going to discard at least one card here. The info bounty is like not great right now, just because it's hard to deal with the mess to chest. So we have a lot more installing to do. Uh, I think we just hit the telework for sure. And then probably we could consider playing the, the Parisha. Well, if we use it once, it's like kind of equivalent to clicking for a credit. Uh, but like not amazing. We can discard a card here. Um, this is we need with the buzzsaw. That's our good combo, but we want a rigging up for that. I think we'll throw out the info bounty, which is a bit unfortunate. Again, it's not the sort of deck that you want to run every turn. So info bounty gets less value than just say like an HB deck or whatever. Subliminal. They added two back to their hand. They use one clicklessly. The other one won't be clicklessly. They're only on five credits. And with five credits again, hard to score out. Maybe they could have a, a seamless launch to score out. But otherwise, if they want to like, if they had a Vladissa Burst, it's what, three to res and then two more for advancements. So it's about the point. This doesn't deal with Vladissa Burst for what it's worth. So maybe we'll trash a Spin Doctor, but I don't know. Okay, they're drawing up. We haven't seen a Spin Doctor yet. There might be one on the table, but again, they've gone through 20 cards. We've seen three agendas. We're assuming about four cards and 20. We didn't make a run last turn either for the Endurance, and they just clicked for a credit. So as soon as we run, they can start fast advancing out. Or not fast advancing, like advancing if there's a 4-2 on the table. So we're just going to try and avoid that as long as we can. And I think we're in a good spot to do that. So what do we have here? We have a Nuka, which is fine. We have another No Free Lunch, which at this point in time, it's like akin to clicking for three credits. I don't know if we have to hold two of them. Um, we definitely want to hit the Telework. We just want to keep mudding up, right? So if we get down the echelon, like at this point, we haven't found any of our other breakers. We have two cleavers in the deck. Um, actually, cleaver is the only thing we're missing, really. We're assuming there are on three pings, right? So we can get the Nuka for next turn. Uh, the Waken plan might be a bit greedy. We can just get the echelon down. I think the Nuka is fine. We're definitely going to use the Nuka next turn. So we need more draw. We haven't been using our prepaid well, and we still have in the deck uh, gambles, two of them, and then three creative commissions. So there's a lot of good top decks, let alone two into the depths. So our draws are going to be really good off of this. All right. Upgrade, not even, maybe, trashed, advance, and they know that we're not running subliminal there. So this, we could lose seven credits to Crypto Crash. Again, they could give us a tag with Orbital, which we're totally fine for. So I think we can just kind of, again, play control. That's a really bad draw. That's really ugly. Nuka, she's unique. Uh, you generally don't want to install the second one while the first one still has uses on it. You could. You definitely could. I've never hit Nuka twice in a turn. Is it the right play? It honestly might be the right play. There might be the replay. I'm going to do it. We just need a draw. There you go. Okay. So we're going to discard a lot of cards here. So we don't have a rigging up, which would be the easiest way to get more cards out of our hand. So I think we'll just play this for the max credits and then we can install something here. So I think we're just going to get our echelon down. Uh, showing your cleaver next would be great. So we have to discard a bunch of cards. We don't need another boat. It's safe under two no free lunches. Uh, pinhole seems a bit much. Deep dive is how we win. These two are good. I don't know if we need the wake with the conduit. This point we could consider just conduit running. Um, I'm hoping that they score an uh, uh, the crypto crash, something that makes us lose credits. Let alone, let alone the um, other thing, the one that costs us, uh, the one that's just the tag one, the four two freedom of, informa of information. All right, we throw out the nuka again. Card draw is fine there. Kind of could use the subliminal, seamless. Five three, nice big old beal. 5-3, love it. So they're only on four credits, which means ice that they can res on R&D is actually kind of minimal. Uh, that is okay for us. So here, we can go HQ. Uh, it could be a bit expensive. What are we getting with our Into the Depths? We have this in our hand. What are we getting with our Into the Depths? Do we actually get anything? Again, 27 cards. So they've gone through 22 of them, and we're expecting about four agendas. So there might not be something on HQ. Uh, they don't really have a good scoring remote server. Um, as soon as they get an advancement on something, though, like it, it definitely changes here. So we might just want to conduit. Now, to be able to deal with this easily, it's Turbine Buzzsaw, which is, again, eight credits for us. We haven't drawn and rigging up in a while. There's two and 17. Maybe throwing out the Nuka was wrong. But I do think Into the Depths R&D, as much as we don't get the conduit, it's fine. And I think we can just set up like a deep dive here. I think we just do just set up a deep dive. So we want to deep dive R&D. Yeah, I think we just deep dive R&D, right? Like we can break this already let's see how this goes 
we're going to have to bow through the mess in Chesso. Admittedly here, actually, there's a lot of things that end the run. This is actually a bit sus. Luckily, it didn't res. Even if, well, that was actually really bad because even if that was a ping, we're in a bad spot. But it turns out it's either Funhouse or mess in Chesso, or they're choosing not to res. We continue to encounter. We'll lose three here. We have to bow through this. Breach server. So we get two tr triggers into the depths. If we hit the endurance first, we can actually charge it, which actually seems relevant because uh, then we don't have to go get our cleaver. So I think we're just going to install a program would be a cleaver, which would be OK, uh, but I'm hoping to win this turn. And with two bow counters, that's all we need. So we'll gain four in charge. Choose installed card. OK, prov can advance again. There could be a spin doctor in server three. We'll see what they do advance. The Sarebna on the top, they advance this card. We'll put a counter on conduit. OK, so here we can run archives. Now, this has to be an advanceable card, so we know server three is not a spin doctor. So we can just run archives. We don't really need to dirty laundry here. We can wait for more value on a following turn if the game's not over. We'll try and deep dive for the win. Again, two, four, six, eight. So there's still 12 agendas and about 27 cards plus five in hand, maybe on the table as well. Scion, shipment. Okay, makes sense. So we'll run HQ. Again, snare here would be bad. We should probably should have ran HQ sooner than committing to run archives because if they hit a snare here, we kind of messes up everything. Six credits. Six credits. We want them to draw, honestly, because we know the top card, so it's unlikely. We'll see more cards. So three for strength is awful. Um, break sentry subroutines. So we don't want the tag. We don't want the net damage. They can draw cards if they want. They draw one unknown, but it means we see more on the, uh, they didn't draw. Shipment from Vlad. Okay. Deep dive. There is one agenda there. We'll take it. It's the orbital. Otherwise, that was it. There's three cards down, I think. Good game. All right, we got it. Their economy didn't really spun up, but you saw their tricks are really scary. Thanks for the game. I'm scared of what's on the table, right? Scions, they're free for them to fire, and that gives us the tags, which clearly they're trying to capitalize on with shipping from the Disabears, let alone we're assuming they're also our um, the Disabears grids. Uh, but we got the pressure up. We got early good pressure, which is good. Eventually, we deal with Mist and really well. At this point, we could probably just like reach a bit and try and close the game as opposed to like trying to get our really, really uh, very efficient rig. And mainly if we got like buzzsaw down turbine, like we break this for two to three credits, we break this for one. So it does change a lot, but like the deep dive probably wins. Seeing eight has a good chance. All right, we're back in startup. We're playing nuclear submarine. We've made a couple changes. We're down to, I think we were 46 cards last game. You want to try and avoid that if you can. And we dropped the two mimics for two echelons. And then we're playing an info bounty. I think we dropped two deep dives as well. Uh, we're playing against Restoring Humanity, which is actually a tricky one. I don't have a lot of experience in startup, and I reckon it's a fair bit better than it used to be. Our opponent there is playing 43 cards, so 18 to 19 agenda points. And we have to watch out for archives. Um, Nano Civic Grid is just kind of a really rough card. Uh, I don't think you're expecting program destruction as much as end the run and some damage stuff, but you also need to watch out for Regenesis, as much as that means they generally are playing 5-3 agendas, which would be send a message in startup. Uh, hand is not really great. We have Into the Depth, Conduit, Pinhole. None of these we really want in our opening hand, barring Info Bounty, maybe Wake Implant, but we need to get our money up in our card draw. And hey, that should hopefully do it. So we'll see again, Restoring Humanity, if there's a face down card in the Archives at the beginning of their turn, they get to flip it. So we do want to just spend some effort running Archives if we can. I think we get cards in there with Anemone, we have to play around, Hansei Review. And even just over drawing with Spin Doctor, we'll get something in there, which is pretty good. Did Zombie keep? He mulliganed, okay. So he might be just fixing a bad hand. Turn one spin doctor is like, not us. Like it's sometimes an awkward start. It does give you control over the game. You kind of forfeit your first turn in some ways. Icing up archives is nice. That's for sure. Bathonymous is the big one at four strength code gate. Again, we're glad we have mimic or don't have mimic to some extent. Admittedly, it'll take us a while to get there. So let's diesel for a start. We definitely want to pressure spin doctor. These are the sort of hands that like this deck can produce because it's running extra copies of breakers where for us, we can discard them, but it's like, I think we've seen this once or twice before, but it's a real cost of having extra copies of, of a lot of this uh, sort of stuff. Now, of course we can discard the echelon. We don't need two. We probably won't need two. We can always just install it for free. Uh, maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. If we run the spin doctor, I reckon they let us trash it, which I don't think we want to do. So we can get the no free lunch down for credits. Uh, we can rigging something up. We can get the nuka down and not use it this turn. So I don't think we have to rigging up this turn. Again, we're not excited to rigging up an echelon. We're really excited to rigging up a boat if we top deck it, which hopefully we do next turn with the nuka. All right, so they're going to drop discard here for sure. And then they can use their spin doctor. Maybe we should have threatened it for that reason uh, because now they can easily overdraw and discard here. It looks like they're going to be discarding no matter what. So they'll get an extra credit here. And we don't know what server two is. Could be a Marilyn, could be a Bladderwort type deck. There are nine credits, so kind of doubtful. Maybe it's a Snare and Urtica. 
sometimes it's hard to get a read on these sort of decks. And a lot of them just kind of play traps. I don't know what else server two could possibly be. Do we want to run with this hand if it's a snare and we lose both echelons? It's really quite bad for us. So let's nuke up. Oops, all breakers. Uh, this is really unfortunate. We're going to run server one here. Of course, a spin doctor. If they shuffle down two face down cards, they actually lose economy. So we're okay with that. So yeah, that turns off their ability, which is kind of nice. Again, I don't know what this is. I'm assuming it's a Maryland or something. So now I think we just install this and then probably just rigging up an echelon just to be safe. Like, again, if you have redundancy with your breakers, you can be a bit careful and you don't lose to like just one rig destruction because rig destruction is really good in startup. But I've been drawing hands like this every so often and it's kind of unfortunate. We're not using our telework this turn. But we just want to get cards out of our hand. We don't want to discard cards if we can avoid it. Uh, not that you're expecting a massive amount of damage. It's not like playing against personal evolution, let alone in standard. So you want to be a bit precious. RD is wide open, mind you. We could have ran that to get a nuka charge. And I think we will this turn if they don't ice it up with the pod mobility. Okay, well, Hocus Eye is our assumption here. Uh, maybe an Amazing Amusements, but probably Hocus Eye. If they spend two credits to do a single net damage, I think we're fine. There's no card here. If we lose it, it's a really, really bad spot. We could always pinhole threading the Hokusai, but I think we want to pinhole threading for a Nana Civic. And we haven't checked servers in a while, so we might check server three out. It's a Spin Doctor. Okay. Now, getting the Spin Doctor down before we start trashing other stuff is pretty important. They also didn't res server two, so there's a chance it's a Reaper function. We're going to try and keep cards in our hand if we can. So, uh, do we want to run Nuka to get a charge? We'll lose a damage. We can't really afford to trash that. No, let's just pressure the Spin Doctor. They got a credit from their ability. But this looks more like a trap deck than it does look like a, you know, mid range kind of glacier thing. All right, so if we hit Nuka, we'll have three cards in hand or three more cards in hand. We'll have eight cards in hand. So it's kind of hard to play that hand out. No matter what, it's going to be hard to play that hand out. Okay, creative commission last click is okay. Into the depths is kind of useless. So we're going to discard uh, maybe two cards here, which is really unfortunate. So I think maybe we will just play our cleaver. Um, there's not a lot of barriers in startup for Jinteki. What is it? It's like Ivic and kind of half run counts. So I think we're just going to install our breakers as much as like a like they're not doing anything too quickly, so I don't mind this. Kind of hard to keep deep dive into this matchup because of Anemone and Hokusai, but um, it's actually a really good card because you can get around snares and stuff like that. But like they're going this fast, so I think we can go this fast and just install our breakers as much as that's not something I want to do in the early game. They have 19 credits. Punitive Counter-Strike could be alive and well, and they finally iced up there. Okay, so at this point, they've drawn a bunch with Spin Doctor. We could consider running HQ to see what's in there. Um, we'll get a bit of a read. It could easily be a snare. If it's a snare, I don't think we mind too much. Uh, the buzzsaw is the one really good card in our hand. And at this point, we probably want to get down our, um, our what's it called? It is always a snare, isn't it? So we'll trash that. We lost our buzzsaw. That sucks. So we can draw up a bit. Dirty laundry there. We could have drawn first to dirty laundry HQ. Maybe that would have been a bit better. So I think we're just going to draw here and remove the tag manually. Uh, Info bounty is one of our latest additions to the deck. It's probably a bit too rich. I assume if we have an endurance, we get good value off of this. They're getting a credit to turn with archives. But now with the echelon, like we need to install two other breakers to not spend three credits to break up Ethonymous, which, you know, maybe is what we're expecting. Let alone like the Ivic, I think is Ivic. How much strength is Ivic? Four or five? It's pretty big. Okay, they drew up. So here there's likely to be an agenda in hand. We don't know what their agenda suite is. Um, assuming if they're on traps, there's not that many good trap agendas. Sting rotated from startup. So maybe House of Knives. Another Hocus Eye, that's fine. We're just trading cards for cards. These sort of decks that don't have like a proactive plan and kind of just like wait for the runner to grind themselves out and overspend resources are such a bummer because the best play a lot of times is just click four credits pass, right? Because they're not doing anything and like is an axis here where we hit a snare and a Hocus Eye worth it? Like literally probably not worth it. So we probably just shouldn't touch them, which again is super, super unfortunate. Uh, so I don't think we do the info bounty. We're going to try and play our minimal amount of cards. If we draw once here, that's fine. Because then we can always do this into this. We just need our endurance and then we can start like really face checking. Yeah, maybe this is like a PE deck. I don't know. Maybe they have a really bad draw. I don't know what the upgrades could be. Like I'm assuming it's a Nana Civic on ice doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's probably a Hocus Eye. We lost our Pinnel Threading, which is a really important card in the matchup. We have one more. All right, so there's a Nana Civic on Archives, I'm assuming. Again, not a lot of a proactive plan here. Maybe that is a Nana Civic and they just kind of put it out a turn early, assuming that we wouldn't run. But like, I don't know if we should run at all. All right, rigging up endurance, that's good. Uh, we can start checking. I think we can drop once more and then we're gonna telework last click. Look at that big old boat. Uh, boat's obviously really good here. Getting down the turbine's actually nice as well because then we have a four strength echelon which deals with archives really well. We gotta watch out that we don't end up taking Nana Civic and then just taking another Pathonymous. So we can do three damage out of nowhere. And then the cleaver is gonna be at five strength which should deal with um, everything well. The only thing we can't deal with is code gates. So Vampir and Nasa is a problem. 
we can always pull that out. Oh, we lost our Into the Depths as well. But like, that's the one copy left we have in our deck we could pull, have to find. So we have two Into the Depths to find the buzzsaw. And then we have a rig. And then hopefully we can just generate enough, enough pressure. We have 18 credits. We're hoping to win in three agenda steals, assuming they're on five threes. And checking archives actually is just kind of worth it to deal with Regenesis. All right, so it's servers 10, turn seven, and there's just kind of like, you know, building a remote server. Hansei, you're going to throw a card out. So the question here is what cards do we want to lose? I think we still have two turbines. I'm going to install the turbine because I'm assuming it's going to just pay its, its dividends. And then we'll just run archives. I'm not going to dirty laundry. Again, we're assuming that's an Nana Civic, so we can take like three net damage here. If it's a uh, Vampire Anasa, we can always just endurance it. If it's a Pathonomous, that's what we expect. So that's one credit. Uh, that one credit means that we can't trash Hokusai, so we're just going to have to crack the No Free Lunch Forest. We probably should have clicked for credit. Oh, it's an Nana Civic. Okay, so that's fine. So they have to show us a face down card and then just fires. If it's program destruction, we lose the game. Well, no, actually, no, we don't lose the game. So this just resolves subroutines. So they can do three net damage to us. That's, I think, the worst subroutine in startup. It's a diviner. Oh, that's fine. So diviner hit an even cost. That's perfect. Oh. Beans. Uh, sorry, I need to hit this first. Sorry, I needed this. I just thought this was on, oh, if it's on Breach, yeah. So I needed to crack that first to be able to trash this. Actually, we didn't even, actually, actually, I didn't. That's fine. So yeah, we had to crack that first in case that was a Hokusai. I think Nana Civic makes sense. We lost the Dirty Laundry. We're going to trash that. We flip all the cards in here. So we got to see what's in here. One Anemone down is actually pretty good for us. That's one of the most unfair cards they have. And we're on five boat counters. And now Nana Civic doesn't do anything if it's on the other two central servers. So that's at least okay. Um, money's not great. We're going to keep cards in hand, though. That's the most important thing. Our breaker suite is super efficient. We break every, basically every barrier in the format, barring some really niche ones that don't see play for one credit. Uh, Echelon gets through all the sentries. I think worst we're expecting is maybe three credits if it has a lot of subroutines. And then we have boat. So we're in an okay spot now. We have 23 cards, 28 more hit points with our hand as well. And we're just going to have to eat more snares, eat more Hokusai's. Uh, the best thing here is that they don't have uh, enough spin doctors and they might be on uh, whatever the bird barbecue card is called. I'll show it here. I don't remember the name. Uh, and that one can give some snares, put some snares back in the deck. At this point, they definitely have agendas in HQ. The question is like anemone into Hokusai into snares lethal. So like we have to draw one and just throw our hand. And this is not a bad hand to throw. Icing up archives. I think we probably want to get the Nuka down first so we can install Nuka, hit Nuka, run HQ. We need to access with enough credits though. So like we're just not in a rush to do anything because they don't really have a proactive game plan. So I'm going to install this. We're going to hit that. So then do we draw? We don't want to draw with this because then we're burst drawing and that's pretty bad. At this point, like running archives can be only one credit. So info bounty actually is kind of interesting. Uh, I think it actually is worth playing once we're set up. Like we're basically set up barring the code gate issue. Yeah, we're probably going to draw into money with this. Yeah, okay. Actually, we drew in way too much money with this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, K2 and Cleaver makes Ivic sad. Ivic is one credit for us to break, which is kind of really, really sick. So here we're going to have to discard a card. We want to try and avoid that if we can. So we go always into the depths archives. Again, we'd only have one credit to break, so that's pretty bad. Uh, so I think we just do telework into sure gamble, and we're just going to discard the pre-show, which, again, you want to avoid discarding cards in this matchup. Uh, from here, we can just into the depths any server. And ideally, we'll end up with our buzzsaw as long as credit's willing. We probably should have installed the info bounty sooner than later because it doesn't do anything to turn it's installed because we don't have other marked cards. At this point, that's the last spin doctor. That's the best thing we can see here because that means that they probably have no recursion barring again. What's it called? The card that's so good. Um, I forget the name of it, but the new uh, Parhelion card that allows you to trash five, shuffle five, draw five or how many you trash. I guess it's X, right? So that's the final spin doctor. There's 18 cards left. Again, they're not pushing out. They might have an upgrade in server two. I do think it's an Urtica or Snare, something that we didn't run, so it didn't work out for them. We have to make sure that we're always checking for Regenesis because that's a big thing. If the Regenesis can't get snuck out, and server two in theory could just be like a, a Sand Sand. A lot of people do play Sand Sand Regenesis because it's one of the ways to fast advance a Regenesis without uh, trashing a card, which is a big text on Regenesis to make it more work. So here we have to run Spin Doctor and probably run Archives. But like, we have to just check everything. And then if that's the case, like they probably don't have a good proactive game plan and we can just like sit back and watch them maybe collapse inwards. All right, we'll play that. Seems good enough. We'll run this. We'll flip archives just so that we don't sit sand sand regenesis if there's a face down card here. So Nana is going back. Uh, we have one more pinhole, though, that we can deal with it, ideally. And snare. So there's two face downs there. So we have to run archives this turn. Uh, so I think we just run archives this turn. I don't think we into the depths it. 
The worst case here could be an enemy. We'd lose two cards. I think we do into the depths of it. Yeah, we can go get our buzzsaw. We have the money. I can't imagine this being very expensive considering code gates are free and barriers and, and sentries cost credits. There's a vampire Nasa. That was the worst case for sure. Uh, eventually, we again, we break this for, I think it's one credit <laughs> as soon as we get a breaker down. So I'm glad they spent seven on this because we're just at the point of invalidating every single piece of ice that they have. We could have, we might have overspent here on the endurance. We're going to get a charge. Uh, but at this point, we have all our breakers. So I don't actually think we need the endurance. Endurance is like a nice to have MU piece more than it is uh, anything else. So we need to get the flips here. We have to also watch out if we steal like six points, we could die to punitive in theory. They did spend seven credits this turn and we'll get four off of this. So we'll get the endurance. We'll gain four and we'll spend that four by just making Vampire Nasa broken for one credit. Oh, two credits. So it's a blood in the water. Okay. Got to keep our hand up. They also threw out a non sell, which that is one of the more expensive sentries. But now, yeah, we break this for two credits. So I'm just going to drop here. I don't think we want to do Nuka because we'd end up discarding cards. We want to try to avoid doing that. So maybe we can win in two agenda scores, but we just need to always check archives because again, Regenesis. It's a problem. It is a sand sand. So we did call that right. So if they just score out a Regenesis here or like even a longevity, I think we're fine with it. Yeah, just empty the Regenesis. Like that's the best thing for us. Now we definitely want to trash this. Uh, they probably can't defend it. If they end up defending this and spend more money, they can't res Hokusai's or Nana Civics. Not that the Nana Civics on their centrals do anything, but like this is really good for us. And at that point, we can get the info bounty down and start like just crushing through. So we just have to keep this down because this is their win condition, even if it's expensive for us and it is relatively expensive for us. Uh, I don't know what they do here. They also can't fire snare here, which is sick. So I do think we can just run HQ. Uh, they probably can't res this ice. If they do and they res the Hokusai, we're totally fine. If it's an it does nothing, they can't fire snare. So let's just get an access while we can. But this is the thing. It's like immediately they went slow. It didn't seem like they were proactively pushing and forcing us to do anything. So it allows us to build this doom rig, which like the deck really does. Take the Regenesis. It is a Nana Civic. Honestly, I don't know if we trash this. Maybe we should. I don't think we should be greedy. And so they did install it on HQ. There's probably one on R&D as well, but this doesn't do anything if there's nothing in the remote server. And so we'll just hit that. We have three cards in hand. Uh, punitive seems pretty far away. We stole one point that turn. And if they're playing with Genesis, like they're very likely also playing send a message. So we're going to try and find that sooner than later. Getting on the info bandy would have been okay. All right. They just played hedge fund. So now they can fire snare. So things are relatively different. So what do we do here? I think we can just nuka. I don't think we need to like greed the value by running R&D. I don't think we want to run R&D today, this turn, till we either get down our conduit or awake. And we have our conduit. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of money here. So I think we're just going to get credits. We can install the info bounty, click for credit, and we'll start rolling a mark next turn. Hopefully you got your mark die. Yeah, I thought they would just inundate us with like throwing all the damage they have at us, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, they have me nice. I don't know if they're on ganked with Uncell. Uncell is like just good enough. For what it's worth, though, against Jinteki, and it's not as strict as it is in standard as it is in startup. Like you generally want to get your sentry down before you're face checking. So like to me, spending a lot of influence on a big old sentry might not be the best as opposed to other factions where you might be more surprised to run into an on cell. And like, I don't know, I guess NBN is probably the best case, but in some ways, the least likely place you'd see an on cell makes it maybe that makes it even better. They're just drying up again. We're at four points. There should be 14 more points within uh, 14 plus seven cards. So 21 cards, right? So it's pretty high. Another thing on HQ could be a Nana Civic, which we just have to run archives first. HQ is our mark, though. And so we definitely don't run the Nana Civic. We just spend the three credits to flip archives, right? No, no way that we don't. In terms of doing that and getting paid, we have uh, Dirty Laundries on the deck, two of them. We have one into the depth in the deck. So I do think we can just like diesel here. We have enough hit points. Fortunately, we didn't get any of the cards we wanted to. We have rigging up for conduit, which is nice, but I think we have to run archives and just always get the flip. And then we can install that, maybe install that. But yeah, do we have to break all the subroutines here? Yeah, honestly, letting them draw cards is probably fine, but this breaks two for two. So I don't think we need to let them. It's up to two cards. If it was draw two cards forced, we'd probably let it fire. Uh, but they don't print subroutines like that anymore. They used to actually print some subroutines that were not May abilities on these sort of effects. And they're really, really a liability. All right, so it's just an enemy. So not the worst target for Nana Civic. And here I think we just set up. Again, I think we're going to want to figure out what this upgrade is before we commit to the rigging up conduit. But we're just getting our boat counters. We're getting our economy on the table. Hopefully we roll like, again, if we roll info bounty on archives, it's a one credit run to flip. And they have to figure out how to win the game which probably their game plan is like get a Santa in the server, get an Anacivic in archives, put us to a spot where like we're scared to run it. Um, that looks like a Hokusai. Um, we have to keep our money up to be able to deal with that. 
So I think we just hit telework. Mark is on HQ. I think we just hit two teleworks and we run it. Like maybe we lose the conduit to damage. That would be the worst case. But like at this point, we're just playing control. I don't think we have to pivot to multi-access. 10 credits. So we have to trash a sand sand probably. It's a snare. That's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, it's not totally fine. It's pretty okay though. So we lost the rigging up. We kept the conduit. And that's a sand sand which we have to trash. Okay. So here we're going to drop one for sure. And we're going to clear the tag clicklessly with this. Just because keeping cards in hand up is super important because we know they're on blood in the water. If we had two cards in hand, they could do install advance events. We want to avoid that. And they're also out of uh, spin doctors, which is super important. So Sansan San is three influence a pop. So they've spent six influence so far. Uh, we've seen seven, eight, nine on the on cell, 10, 11, 12 on the spin doctors. So there's a chance there's one more Sansan. San, but as soon as we get rid of the last Sansan, San, like they have to score on a remote server. And so far, they haven't shown that they're on actually like install advance advance traps. So we can run most anything. All right, Hansei Review is going to give him 10 credits. We just check archives here. Hopefully our Mark rolls archives. That'd be sick. Yeah, there we go. All right. Again, this doesn't cost a lot. There's nothing that we access hurts us. So I think we can just start there. We can always just draw for an into the depths, right? Okay, well, again, we're just not going to try and win on centrals because they have to score out somehow and they only have 14 cards left and the remote server doesn't really work. So we're totally fine just, uh, just playing a bit of control here. We just have to make sure we have the credits and cards in hand so that we can contest. And I think the mo mo one of the most unfair cards that they have is Anemone. Uh, two of them are out. So like we're not going to be too scared to be like, oh, run here, take extra damage, then die to something, right? Because that's the card that like gets you out of nowhere, and we know where two of them are. Oh, shit. Maybe we should have Telework gambled first. Blood in the Water, we'll take it. Again, maybe they have a Regenesis in hand. They actually could be on Big Deal, but I think Big Deal is four influence, and they've already spent three, six, seven, nine, twelve. so I don't think they can. All right, so I think we just do, we don't have to show that we have these. I think it might be totally fair to do um, telework into creative. The other option is just draw into creative. I think that's good enough. It kind of obfuscates how much money we can burst up. But like, again, we have six bow counters and they have probably can res two ice, but I don't think it's gonna be very expensive for us. The one unknown card, or maybe those are two nano civics. We haven't seen other upgrades besides Sand Sand. So if those are the two nano civics, they can never make archives unfair. So we can always just check that. And again, we, we're just gonna wait for them to deck out. Polity to that's bad TV, but like one of the safer plays here, admittedly, we've seen where only one of the snares is. It's just wait for them to deck out because they don't have a very proactive plan here. Here we might have to eat a snare, but it's kind of how it goes. We'll install the Nuka first because it's like the best burst draw we have. We could run, clear the tag, draw with Nuka. But here it's 12 credits. There's no ice they can res that costs us more than two. Oh, half run's kind of annoying. Let's see if they discard a card here. If they discard a card here, uh, we just run archives. Right? Because we can't let them have a card in here because if that's Regenesis, they can score a 5-3. So if it's a 5-3, we win. So I think we just end the run here, run archives. Right? Like I, the worst they can score here is the Longevity Serum. So they blank the cleaver. We can just boat through this for what it's worth. Like, or buzzsaw through it for a credit. Like we don't even have to use the boat here because that's one of the big downsides of half run is it has two types. It's not only can we endurance through this, but we also have buzz out and we also have echelon. So if server two is there's a chance it's the non civic, which would be bad. Uh, that card is not very good, is it? Uh, Ob loves it. So like, I don't think they can score that much. They can only be on one seamless launch, so they can't score out like maybe a four two, but nothing worse than that. But if there's a regenesis here and we don't run it, that's a problem. Can we just check this? If we hit a snare, we can't run archives and flip. I think we just bounce here and check archives. Like, I think if they score out a longevity, we're somewhat in an awkward spot. So we need to figure out what to do here, right? Our mark is on archives, so running archives costs us one credit. We want to get the flip. That's the most important thing for us to do. It keeps off Nana Civic. Um, I think we can just bounce off of here because they have one more Regenesis in the deck. It can't be a blood in the water. Well, we'd have to draw for it not to be a blood in the water. Uh, I'm just going to let it fire. I think this is fine. Uh, maybe it's the last Sand Sand, but if it's the last Sand Sand, again, they have to res the Sand Sand and still score out an agenda, which is nine credits. And as long as we respect Nana Civic, like, or sorry, respect Regenesis, it's not a problem. So we're just going to always flip archives. It's really cool how Archives Matters actually, like, turns, it, it, like, it works out. When you play against this sort of archetype, you do care about archives more than anything, which is kind of neat because that hasn't really existed outside of Industrial Genomics and Jinteki or in Netrunner for a really long time. Yeah, it's longevity serum. So that might have been a regenesis. GG, that is GG. I totally forgot we're on seven. What was in the remote? 16 ice and still I got none. <laughs> yeah, they, they iced up centrals, I think, before they should push. And like, I think that momentum is so important. Uh, that just a snare. <laughs> the snare in the remote server. Yeah. If you uh, don't push out, even with however little ice you have, 
the time to build this doom rig. Yeah, they probably do want to ice up archives once, but if they go a bit too slow, we build this. And then again, like this is, I think, the first game in the series where you actually got to see the doom rig. And immediately we drew a lot of the pieces. We discarded some of them. Exactly. That's why I have 16 ice. But like, I'll have to watch the VOD. But I'm assuming because they, before they put any ice on server two, they put four ice on centrals. And I don't think you need to do that. I'm not sure you do. I think maybe one on our archives, maybe one on our ID to stop the Padma ability, which didn't fire once. Because again, we don't have to deal with the ability if they can't score out. And then we could just go here. Hey, thanks. You too. All right. Let's do another one. All right. We're playing against Reality Plus. We're in startup. Uh, Lion, he is playing Reality Plus 49 cards. Uh, it's actually something that I've been like considering more and more in startup just because. One of the big reasons you see Reality Plus at 44, which is often what you want to do, generally you have a benefit from playing a smaller card or a smaller deck size. It's a bit more consistent. Uh, the agenda suite, like the 1819 agenda suite versus the 20 or what was it the 2021 agenda suite doesn't feel that much different in Reality Plus. There's not all the five threes, like the six five threes in standard. So I do think you see the 49 RP like a bit more. Or Reality Plus, we can't say RP, that's something else. Uh, opening hand, we have the No Free Lunch, which is nice. The big threat here is that we can deal with Funhouse really well. Uh, the No Free Lunch deals with the Drago, which is obviously a big threat. We have Economy, we have Card Draw. The rigging up into the depths will eventually be good, I'm hoping. Uh, let's keep this. Thanks, you too. So Tag Punishment is real in this format. We have to watch out for Public Trail. We have to watch out for Retribution, which can sink a boat, let alone individual programs. That's okay. Boats generally a bitter, has a bigger target painted on it. And we got to figure out how they're going to win. Uh, a lot of times now with these decks, they're running the 4 2. So they're running like Crypto Crash, Off World Office. Um, maybe they're playing, you know, Tag Storm, like a lot of tags, not single tag matters. And then they're also playing like Freedom of Information, which uh, is a bit harder in this format, I think. It's harder to give the runner a lot of tags. But I think a lot more times runners will go full tag me if they ever take on one too many tags. So this could be like a Drago as soon as turn one. Like that's kind of the issue. Uh, unless they have seamless, they're not, we're not really threatened by any agenda they could score out. So we just want to get our no free lunch down. How do we start this turn? If we do install Nuka, hit Nuka, install telework, no free lunch. That's like kind of slow. I think that's right. I think we have to get the no free lunch down. Uh, mostly because the Drago can trash our resources and that would be bad. So we'll start here. A creative commission would have been playable. So we're just going to get our economy down to some extent. We have rigging up into endurance, which is sick. And we can be aggressive. The ice suite that NBN has in startup is so good right now. Funhouse, uh, Mesnachesvo, it's just a regular thing. We have to bring that down because uh, their economy is not amazing. So we have to figure out how to get that down. So ping is a really good face check. It gives them two credits or two cards. So it's either free um, or different than free. This is three to trash. And if we want to get down our boat, we can get our boat down with six credits. And I don't think we want to ever pop this for three credits unless we really, really need it. So I think they're just going to have the regolith like us spending a breaker and paying three to deny them from getting six is not amazing. So I think we're just going to continue to set up. I think we can just draw with Nuka. All right, that's fine. So we can hit this we can get some money. And then here we can rigging up the boat. I don't love doing that because then we show that we have the boat. We can also pin all threading here and take that down. Uh, the pin all threading is like probably a bit better to deal with Drago. Sometimes they're even running the Disabear Scrid. We could consider just rigging up the boat. I just don't like the fact that we get this down that gets better once per turn uh, or we can charge it once per turn and we're not charging it. Like often any card that I have that has a that we have that has like a once per turn clause, we want to get use of it the turn that's installed. So I don't love this. It also shows that we have endurance on our last click. So they have a full turn to interact with it or like set up for it, which again, not a big fan of. So don't love this play. And now they can decide where they jam their remote server. If that's a fun house, it's pretty annoying. Uh, so we could just pinhole it if we wanted to. I think we might. I think we might just pinhole it and then see if it's worth going through. It's a gaslight. Uh, at this point, we've already kind of committed, so we will trash that. I don't know what operation we're really worried about, but that's a really good thing to jam their mode server. We got our endurance proc. We've hit our telework, so we can install the Nuka and hit the Nuka. We'll discard cards, but I think that's totally reasonable considering we need to find our second door free lunch and we don't need the turbine just yet. The turbine's good. It means that you can play one credit to get with a buzzsaw through, um, what's it called, uh, through a funhouse. There's not that many other like big breakpoints. You need two breakers for Echelon to deal with Unsmiling Sarevna for three, but Turbine doesn't really work. There's certain matches where Turbine's worse than others. Uh, this is not the best Turbine match unless they start playing Mess and Chesfos, which I think Funhouse usually hits the slot first. Okay, uh, let's check a Scion. Just kind of scared of that. Uh, what else? I think we can into the depths here. We probably just want money. I think we can into the depths here. And we can clear the tag. Yeah, let's just get some money first in case we have the trash stuff. But I'm assuming we'll just sail through this. Let's see what this could be. 
the ping. Okay, cool. So that we have a cleaver in hand if we need to. They've given us a tag for the first time. So it's two cards or two cards. They just took the money. So we're going to have to bow through this. Uh, we could produce a breaker. I don't think we want to. We're just going to breach here. We're going to get the endurance charge, of course. And I think we're just going to get four credits and steal a beal. I don't know what two is. I don't know what two is. I think here we can just draw up and remove a tag. We have the cleaver for this, which is good. Like I was worried that this was going to be like a fun house or something that's hard for us to run through every turn. I don't think it exactly is. This could be a Drago, but if that's the case, we have a no free lunch and one waiting. And as much as possible, I don't love showing two no free lunch. That's oh, a gaslight. I wonder where they're going to get public trail. Probably they have a lot of money. They can afford public trail end of the line. OK, so we need to keep our uh, hands, our cards up, let alone no free lunches. But I don't love showing uh, that we have five cards in hand. They could in theory do public trail, public trail end of the line. Uh, at that point, we would maybe go down to zero credits. Probably not. All right, so we just have to keep checking this. I think check a silence is going to surprise us at some point. We have all three into the depth. So I think we're just going to do cleaver. We're going to run this uh, snare would be annoying. That's a reason to pre-install the no free lunch, but I don't have a good read on what they're doing here. Is the bow counters cheaper than four credits on the cleaver? It seems like they're jamming every turn. So over enough period of time, maybe not. We'll gain four credits. It's a regolith. Uh, I don't care if they have more than 22 credits. I don't think so. I don't think we need to trash this. We just need to make sure that we always have at least eight credits and at least four cards in hand. So I think we're going to just nuka here and just creative. So that's the big thing is eight credits is the break point for public trail, let alone, of course, we have the no free lunch, but we're OK dropping down to fewer. If we're actually playing around public trail, it might have been correct to play the sure gamble as opposed to creative because creative is the card that it's much easier for us to play next turn. Um, upgrade on top of the regolith. Probably in a maze, maybe a Vlad grid, but I don't know what that is. That's terrifying i don't i don't know what an upgrade is at this point i think we can consider running r d and just getting some accesses for what it's worth they've gone through 15 cards and we haven't seen a single agenda yet so there's probably agendas in hq almost definitely there's no agenda that punishes us or is expensive to steal anymore bologna is gone i don't think there's anything else besides the one of tomorrow's headline so i think we can just go hq we can always like also into the depths for a conduit and just try and control the game that way which i think is also very fair uh so let's see what r d is I think would we sure gamble first? I don't think we're gonna end up spending money here. But if we're gonna go R and D, we should probably like into the depths. Um, we'll be on 10 credits. We install the condo we were on four. So I think we should do this first. If we hit a snare here, it's actually pretty awkward. We might hit a snare. It's an Eli, okay. So cleaver is three credits. Um, wasn't expecting to see that. I think we'll just bow through it. But it's a barrier. Endurance into the depths. I think we're going to get a card. We're just going to get a conduit and try and close the game out. It's another Eli. Those are, they do get taxing. All right. Uh, I think we can run HQ at some point here. We just want to kind of draw up. We have our buzzsaw, which is nice. I think we can just draw up again. Uh, getting our HQ pressure card or wake would be kind of nice. Even just like, uh, what's it called? It'd be totally fine. Um, excuse me. An info bounty would be totally fine. So we know they have an E-line, that's it. And we should be checking HQ. There's definitely agendas in there. We don't have HQ multi-axis. And maybe with the conduit, they'll like ice R&D more, which is like fine. If we get down our turbine, we break these for one credit a pop. We just have to find the turbine. All right, they've been drawing a lot. There's definitely agendas in there and they don't have a remote yet. Could be the E-line. They really want to jam their remote server if they can. Like we're not flush with credits and we actually sacrifice a pretty powerful card there. Yeah, there you go. I like this play. So it could be a Sansan. Like Sansan, San, they can afford into like a 4-2 pre-installed into uh, make it a 3-2 and like Crypto Crash loses our money. That's pretty good. Uh, we can see two cards on R&D. I think that's really, really good with the bow counter. We can just say, OK, we'll lock here. I do think they have enough agendas in HQ, though, that they might actually have five points. And so they don't need to see the top of R&D. Also could be a spin doctor, but I'd be surprised. So what's our turn? I think we definitely run R&D. I think we can draw up once. OK, so that's the rest of our turn. So we'll just run R&D. We'll charge our boat. Do we spend two boat counters? I think we can spend two boat counters. Oh, whoops. We got to make sure we run. We need to hit conduit. I've been messing that one up every once in a while, huh? All right. Medium players will know. Spin doctor off the top. That could be the first spin doctor they've seen. I don't know. Silver one has a chance of being a spin doctor. I think we'll trash it. We'll trash Drago for sure. I think there's a big chance that's a Drago. And so we're going to have to run it in a turn or so. So we're going to have to set up for that. I think rigging up a buzzsaw is OK. This might just be the Eli. So I think here we run HQ to see a bit of what's in their hand. I think all we know is an Eli potentially and then also potentially. Uh, well, we know they have an end of line public trail. No surprise. OK, let's keep it above eight credits. So maybe they draw go here if they do. Um, we want to find more likely we want to find our last. Uh, what's it called? Pinhole threading. OK, 
tomorrow's headline, that's totally fine. Them scoring this out is okay. Uh, we can now see the next cards on R&D, but this tag, we can just click to clear. They just got credits from this. If they drew, it would have broken R&D lock. And they have to discard a card here. So I don't know what the upgrade is. I think it's an Amaze Amusement. So we need to figure out how to push ourselves forward while also pressuring them. We know the top card of R&D. Actually, no, we don't because we trashed everything. They drew unknown cards. So we can see three cards on R&D. That seems good. So I think we just draw once here. That's not what we want. We can run R&D. Um, actually, Parisha is not the worst. Uh, we're assuming they still have Spin Doctors, Gaslights, Regoliths, and Dragos in the list. Admittedly, we've seen two of some of those. So it's not the worst economy card. Figuring it out. This is a free run in theory. It doesn't push our endurance forward, but we spend two charges to get two charges. We're going to see three cards here. And we know the headline is out, so we can actually run last click a bit. So Revna, okay, they're going to put that up. So we're off-world, we'll take it. And there's the Amaze Amusements. Again, we can't trash this Parisha, but that kind of gives us a good read on what's in server one. Uh, yeah, we'll put the virus on Conduit. At some point, they need a purge. I think the Serebna will end up on R&D, which is annoying the turn it gets uh, used. So here, I think we can just run HQ for a single. I do think they have agendas in there. We've seen three agendas and 20 cards. You're assuming there's about four agendas and 20 cards in the game, especially without Spin Doctors or Draw. Yeah, there you go. And so I'll just remove the tag here. Of course, we're above eight and then we're above cards in hand. So we're in an okay spot. So here they're in a really rough spot, right? Like they have a Serebna in hand. They know if we run R&D next turn, like we can just kind of go ham and see a lot of cards if we're really, really panicked. Uh, they might have one more agenda in HQ. Again, they've gone through 22 cards. We think that's an Amaze. So what was it? Is a Serevna into an Amaze, right? I, I talked too fast. I forgot what we saw. Um, obviously editing. I'm going to kick myself a bit, but uh, that's super important that we remember what we saw. But we know that they're drawing a Serevna here. We're pretty sure this is an Eli. We know they have an end of line in hand and there's an Amaze coming up and an Amaze here. I think the Maze was the third card. We can just check, right? Yeah, so it was, it was Serevna into Offworld into a Maze. So we know the next one card on R&D. If they purge here, like it's not the best. We can always just run R&D and keep seeing cards, right? Like this is a three credit break. It's doable, let alone we could empty our boat. It's just like a really go hard. I just wish we were drawing up more. Like a Nuka would be good. We don't have Earthrise, but a Nuka would be really good. Cool thing too is if we top deck, what's it called? Um, well, firstly, the mazes no longer do anything because if we steal an agenda, they win. So we can ignore them. I was going to say in theory, like uh, pinhole threading is another way to deal with a maze, which is kind of cute. But um, yeah, at least at the maze at this point is blank, barring like nightmare archives or some way we'll take negative agenda points, but they're not on it. And if they were, we could take at least one core damage safely. Two core damage gets a bit harder because of end of line, but we have two no free lunch. We don't want to show the second one. I think I might've said this already, but the idea is that they might think like I have a way to spend this credits to like get rid of this thing. And then, you know, that could work. I think here they're considering public trailing. We also know they have a public trail uh, to get rid of this. The second public trail, if they fire it, will go down to uh, one and then we'll just reinstall that. And that's kind of the idea is that we want to make them think that we're like kind of close to dying when we're not actually like when we have more safety in our hand. They just drew the maze. So again, we know in the line a maze, that's probably Serevna, which they can pay us. So we can only break one subroutine. We'd break the damage subroutine, I reckon. Actually, no, we'd break the tag subroutine, which means we have to pre-install the no free lunch. And card and server one, no idea what that is, but I don't think it matters when we can see four cards on R&D this turn. So if it's a damage subroutine, do we die to snare? I think we can. I think it's a possibility to die to snare. So Serevna, when they res it for four, they can pay us two credits and then we can only break one subroutine on it. So the subroutines are, they may draw up to two, I think it is. Um, then importantly, take two net damage and take a tag. So the tag for them could be more card draw, which they're unknown cards they're drawing into. It could be credits. Uh, then the net damage is like, I honestly think it's the tag that's fine because then we don't have to respect snare unless it's double snare. But like, could be. We've only seen end of the line for influence. Oh, and two Eli's, but that's not a lot. That's like six influence, I think. So I'm not sure what to do here. If they score out, they're not purging, which is kind of cool. That could be a Drago. Um, I don't know if they have another agenda in HQ. They might. They haven't seen any spin doctors for a while. So I think we can draw up once here. I don't know if we have to hit the Serebna. I think we have to hit the Serebna at some point. I think we just need more cards in hand. That's the Turbine. The Turbine, we can get down for one credit. It means that we break Eli for one credit. So we're spending two cards and one credit to save boat counters on this, which is nice. It's nice because we're gonna have to boat through this thing consistently. And the draw subroutine on this is actually like something we don't care about. We can fire it when we're running R&D consistently to like make our dig deeper. Like they can't afford to draw a lot of times. It's a bit of a liability unless they're looking for ice, but on game point, it's a bit hard. I think we can just drop once more and maybe get that down, uh, get down the no free lunch. Credits are okay. We're doing okay on credits. If we don't run, we don't have to worry about public trail. So I think we will just get these down. 
four cards in hand if we don't run. Uh, they could Drago us here and then we have to feed a no free lunch. And at that point, we can consider just trying to go in R&D. We just want to make sure we don't lose to Snare, which is like totally playable card in Reality Plus. And it makes a lot of sense if you're expecting uh, Envil Line, which we know they have. Probably not worth it. I don't know. Kind of worth it. Cards in hand are important. This might not be the that They drew an unknown card. Again, server one, nothing happened with it. Second ice here. So they might be pushing for the Drago play. We also have to watch out if they score out a Crypto Crash, which we're assuming they could be on very easily. Uh, we go down to one credit. So getting down a Telework would be nice to ensure that we have something to click to get economy over time. Uh, but they didn't do anything with this card yet. We know the Amaze here is useless. We know they have an Amaze in hand. Okay, they're advancing. That could be a Drago. We've only seen one. So if we hit here again, we have to take either a tag or two net. I think we can take the tag pretty safely. And then we could maybe die to double snare. If that's the case, we'd have to draw twice though. I don't think we're gonna end up doing that anytime soon. I think we have to risk double snare. Maybe that's why they're not purging. Maybe we have to assume that they're not purging because of double snare. But if we hit this, we can take a tag. If they draw two, like it's fine because HQ is open. Then we break the net damage subroutine so we don't die to single snare, break for one. Yeah, I think that's fine. And we'll get paid maybe on the way. The only question is whether we get this down first, but I don't think we do. Oh, we're learning. All right, so Conduit's going to see four cards. Yeah, it's a Serebna, it's no surprise. This is the one ice we haven't seen. They, they uh, broke lock. So here they can pay us two credits and we can only break one subroutine. So they did. Okay, so we can only break one subroutine. That's going to be two bow counters. So which subroutine do we not want? I don't think we care if they draw cards that much. Uh, we don't take the net damage because we died a snare, so we'll take the tag. So I think we'll just clear the tag and make sure, again, we will always have four cards in hand so we don't die to single end of line. All right, so we have a tag. They just drew more. So like here, we can just clear the tag, run HQ, run HQ. Uh, this costs us a credit, which puts us at nine. That's still fine. Like we just want to be above eight. Uh, I guess we'll be less when we clear the tag. A bit risky. Maybe we don't have to run HQ this turn. Oh, okay. Well, good game. All right. Got through it. We respect their stuff. The no free lunch is super powerful. Um, they didn't get us to run the remote server. We just put on more pressure. Hey, thanks. You too. Get you around. Um, they had some threat. They forced us to the remote server, but they didn't have things to put in there that were actually super, super impactful. Um, it's really hard. Like no free lunch is incredibly powerful and it's, it's super important that you have a way to deal with it. Oh, cheers. Uh, that they, uh, you know, they have to figure out a way to deal with this. Otherwise, we can just put this down and kind of tunnel. Like, we get good value from running R&D as opposed to the last game where we never ran R&D. Here we're saying, like, yeah, you might have two agendas in hand, but that will probably take you to six points if all you do is jam. And maybe that was the right thing to do. But I do think that one Beal snipe from HQ was probably, well, like, mathematically very likely to be the only other agenda they had there. Maybe the fact that they didn't draw or see any spin doctors mean their hand was a bit uglier and they didn't get any filtering. But, um, yeah, you just got to make sure. And again. All the things that we were playing around, I'm going to try and express them so they're obvious, but you don't see them as easily when you play the corp, right? Like we're always trying to keep eight credits. We're always trying to keep four cards in hand and we're trying to keep a no free lunch because if we have at least two of those or even sometimes one of those, but usually two of those, they can't do public trail into public trail into end of line, which will end us the game. Let alone retribution sinking the boat would be pretty bad as well. Cool. And I think that's this deck. Um, I had a lot of fun with this one. I think there's a lot of different ways you can build it. Um, the two breaker suite for safety versus the one ofs and playing other cards in the deck, whether you want your multi access, whether you want to play the twinning, which I think is actually quite an interesting thing. You probably have to play more prepaids or whether you want to play, you know, all copies of the deep dive and then also have conduit on demand. And then of course you also have the wake implant, which is really, really quite powerful in Padma, but this is a really fun shell. Obviously Kokoro did a great write up. So the deck list will be in the description. Go give that a like, a favorite, a comment, whatever you'd like to do. I reckon he'd appreciate that. But I think this is a really good starting shell for startup for sure. Sure. If you want to play a very aggressive shaper, um, endurance is obviously still very good in the format, but honestly, it doesn't feel absurd. It kind of like there's a lot of decks that are still taxing it out where it feels like a good piece and it bridges that early to mid game. But I don't know. It, it feels it doesn't feel like the worst, uh, which is cool. And I think it's mostly because corpse have other alternate win conditions that you still have to respect. But that should be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, hopefully you enjoyed those games. I've been having a heck of a great time playing Startup right now. Uh, we jammed a whole bunch of games with this. Again, we forgot to record, I think one of the best games that we've got on, on would have been on tape in a long time. So apologies for that. But Startup has been really fun. Um, just alternate win conditions you have from Corpse that are pressuring you out. I've been enjoying myself. I think maybe a big part of it is I haven't played Anarch yet. We're gonna cross that bridge at some point. 
Uh, but huge shout outs again. All these names here are patrons, including Kokoro. Again, the huge shout out for writing up this list. Thanks so much for all these nice people that help support this channel. Allow me to put the time and effort to get this stuff together. It does take a fair bit of time to edit this, record this, make sure we have good gameplay or good enough gameplay. Again, still kicking myself. Um, hopefully you're doing well. Again, we'll be back with some new content in the next couple days. We're working on like a Matryoshka runner, uh, some criminal stuff, and the aggression's been really good as much as program destruction's been a problem. Again, thanks so much for watching. Here's some recommended content, and we'll see you soon.